What's going on, everybody? It is I, the Loaf King, and I'd like to welcome you back to episode two of The Lunch Table. I have with me my four co-hosts, the amazing Christian man, Yo. Magic Lunchbox, <laughs> yeah, Kajre <Kyrie> Bandit, <laughs> I'm a dog, my ass nigga. I got that dog, man. And Zemus Arellum. Oh, you're all ugly. And before we start off this podcast, something that I wanted to start doing was at the beginning of it, we each say what we ate today. So I'm going to start off with Magic Lunchbox. I'm going to let you know he started off with Magic Lunchbox because he knows he's the one that's going to say more than anybody else. This is stupid. Please continue. I don't, I don't get how those two correlate, but you know, uh, I had stupid. I had some Roy Rogers and uh, and some pork chops. <laughs> More pork chops from yesterday. Okay. Yeah, it was leftovers. Gotcha, gotcha. How about you, Zemus? I had pizza. Okay. It's always a great choice. Cadre Bandit. I ain't have nothing. Oh, that's a problem, man. I won't blame you if you grab something in the middle of this podcast. I'm not eating anymore. I'm oh. going on a fast. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, Zima special, gotcha. <laughs> All right, first off, Joe, that was mad disrespectful. <laughs> you watch your fucking mouth. Number one. There's no number two. There's no number two. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nigga, you knew. <laughs> An amazing Christian man. What about you? Did you eat anything today? <laughs> See, um, had an oatmeal cookie and sea moss. Oatmeal cookie um, and sea moss. Okay. Yeah, a monster. Some coffee. And um, so two unhealthy animal. things. Some 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 eggs. So, um. All right. Okay. <laughs> and um, that. Let's see what else. Um, for lunch, I had a. Um, Okay. <laughs> that was that was all breakfast. I had a um yeah, that was all breakfast. Um You I'm, ate the monster for breakfast? Like what the fuck? No, I didn't eat the monster. I don't know why. I just asked you, you bro. What? <laughs> you just said it was all breakfast. That means it? you take a monster for breakfast. Say it was all breakfast. Sean said it was I, all that's what I just I, I didn't Nikki, say it. What are you talking about? Sean didn't say anything. Yo, what's Joey, happening right now? Joey asked, asked you you had breakfast. all that for breakfast and you said yes. yes. No, I didn't. I, I did. I have all that for breakfast. Oh yes, I didn't. That's all I have. For I was kind of late for my man. Okay. That's crazy. Trying to gaslight on a recording is wild. Listen, all right. Sometimes you and Sean sound alike. Okay. What? But, yeah. My nigga, no, no, absolutely not. Yes. This is the like. perfect intro segments to have. So, I, we're gonna do this every time now. <laughs> now, um, let's see. What else I have? So for lunch. Um, no, no, no. You, you said enough. What? It's, Christian. We, it's we fine. We already got what Sean was looking for. We already got what Sean was looking yeah, for. I, I was, was going down was, the list. I thought we were going down the list. No, no, no. It, That's my thought. It's and it's I, fine. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I had a factor too. Does that does that change anything? <laughs> yeah, ugly. <laughs> All right, so. We're gonna start off today's uh, topic Just with get 8% off your with, first order. What the? <laughs> we ain't sponsored by Factors, so get the hell out of here with that. Oh, okay, I thought we were. So much for the lunchbox, the lunch table. I'm sorry. I mean, I thought, you know. Hey. No. Okay, so I guess not. Sorry, Factor. We try to help you. So the oh. first, t- t- you want this topic anyway, Christian, right here. This is a big what? one for everyone. So the first what? topic that we're going to start off today with is uh, Akira Toriyama. He uh, passed this oh, month. Uh, yeah, so earlier this month, it was. Uh, it's pretty big for a lot of people that have been fans of mm-hmm. uh, his series. In a general. great growth in the anime community. And uh, honestly, I just wanted all of us to you know go out and just name a few. Uh, like just one thing that you really truly enjoyed from Akira Toriyama and give a quick reason why and you know we'll just go down the list and we'll start with you Christian because I know that I um, think out of everybody this might have hurt you the most yes um can't speak for everybody but yes um 
so yeah, they, he was essentially the first love of anime for a lot of um, individuals in the anime community, especially black men, young black men and women. Um, but he definitely, in a way, he definitely um, saved me as far as like, you know, me going through a tough time. Because you know, I mean, anime they have lessons all of them do. The, the the number one the number one lesson that all of them share is never give up and um, um, him creating Dragon Ball and Goku having that you know keep training and you know get better attitude is it, it really encouraged me so um, you know that in a way that definitely kind of you know shaped my view of uh, of things in a in a way um, if that makes any sense. Um, <laughs> postulate a question specifically this is uh <laughs> could you not just at, say can i ask a question what the like why did you why what was the postulate for okay um but yeah that's my thought yeah that was um well go ahead and ask the question <laughs> yeah, what's he, the- did. Oh. he did he did he said it was his dub goku oh okay oh was it dub goku i mean does it really matter i mean it's Goku. Yes, because they had different lines, they, they had different personalities. There also, there also Man, is different scenes. You're really gonna do this, huh? Uh, okay, let's. We're gonna say both and just keep it moving. Um, mm. who's next? Oh, okay, <laughs> that seemed mad disrespectful. I don't know why you had to do that and just. Uh, like, uh, 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 my question meant nothing. Um, your question meant it, it meant something. I said both. All right, it meant something. I mean, it was a kid, so I was introduced to the dub one first before I was introduced to the sub. Um, what, what's wrong with saying that instead of just saying, instead of going both, and let's keep moving on? I apologize. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Zemus, how about you go ahead and next? Corona triggers. Okay. Oh, trigger are we and why? The Japanese version or the English version? Um, I only was aware of the uh, English version, actually. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I don't know if there are any differences between them or not. I don't know either. Huh? I just felt like I asked that question. I, I, I have no idea. I mean, we know why you asked the question. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we know. I never really uh, played Chrono Trigger. Um, well, I shame to say. Um, could you give like a good. could you give like a quick summary, Zemus, about um, what features of Chrono Trigger did you like that uh, has some like inspiration from Akira Toriyama? Is it like the character designs only, or um, for for me, a lot of it was the character designs. Um, it like I didn't realize he even made it until long after, or helped make it, I guess. I don't know how much of a hand he had in it, but that was, to me, that's more one of the, everybody knows Dragon Ball. Uh, because it's kind of in the limelight right now, Sandland, even people kind of know. This is one of the more obscure things that I did really enjoy, and I want to give him credit, however much credit he deserves for it. Okay. That was beautiful, Zemus. Magic. <laughs> well, obviously, the first anime I've watched was Dragon Ball. Obviously, uh, no. but I've but I've enjoyed Dragon Quest. Um, that's pretty. That might be all I've watched from him. Is pretty much Dragon Ball and Dragon Quest. You can clearly see the similarities. He has a very clear art style when it comes to his characters and everything. And you know. He's just good at making those type of worlds. It, uh, you know, gateway anime. Very good for me. Uh, you know, wish him and his family all the best dealing with what's going on. Fair enough. Fair enough. Cadre Bandit. <laughs> Hot no Axi said the Bandit part. <laughs> yeah, it, was, uh, it threw me <laughs> off. Okay. I feel like I'm on trial now. Um, it's honestly, it's the, it's the same way in terms of introduction to anime as it was Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z was my introduction 
and having that gateway and being like joe said having a way to uh, create that world the way he did it was honestly great i didn't watch too many of other of his animes but in terms of dragon ball z and the way it influenced how i even play game now i interact with people through the lessons there he definitely made a change you can clearly see a change it's like losing a losing a pillar like the home's never gonna fall you know somebody's always gonna be able to be there to pick up the slack but nobody's ever gonna be able to fill the shoes i agree um and as for me uh just taking off of what uh magic and cadre said i and and basically all everyone said i enjoyed all those series um dragon ball is honestly the one that uh i guess i connect to the most in terms of animes uh because it's something that i started watching with my uh father because my father actually is the one that got me into anime uh because he would he enjoyed like the cartoons and such and he saw this and he was like oh there's no battle at battle show and stuff like this should, this would be pretty cool you should watch it i was like yeah sure i, I enjoy that because i'm usually used to watching the goofy stuff and for me dragon ball had like the most uh bounce of goofiness and action in it and to this day i still to some degree hold it a little higher than dragon ball z and um the other extensions of uh the dragon ball series um overall i enjoyed a lot of his works and um in terms of games one game that i hold dear to my heart besides like the, the chrono trigger and dragon quest would actually be blue dragon which i feel is a very obscure game that not many people that's, got to play that's interesting because i don't think I, I don't think anybody really like would have mentioned blue dragon because of no i honestly forgot actually it got, crazy. Negativ- it got a lot of negativity uh, back in the day because i mean there, there was some issues with it yeah but like i felt like it was actually kind of advancing the ideas that it had for uh rpgs um, and yeah. such and uh I, r- I really wish that uh they would have continued it like they continued it as an anime at one point too but um it trailed off of the source material so i don't even know if it had a manga honestly maybe it did but regardless to sum it up uh i really enjoyed a lot of his stuff and i hope the best for his family as well and i think a lot of artists are gonna take into fact that they should watch that their health is very important they obviously do but even more so to with this uh blow to the anime community uh i think that they're gonna even be more uh aware of where they are at mentally and physically with their health and i think at the very least that's one thing that we can take from this as a positive point that his influence has influenced a lot of the uh manga artists out there to push themselves to do better each day and keep themselves in a in a better in a good place so yeah i Rip- hope that also carries over to the companies allowing them to do that too that they're not pushing too hard yes true that's, a, that's a, another factor that it's kind of out of their control if they're working under certain companies so we can also, only hope i pay- also, I think for this country, Zima said, lend me Chrono Trigger. You could just, well, I don't want to say this you, on the, on the podcast. <laughs> I do not. Uh, then it'd be kind of hard for me to lend it to you. You're going to uh, just get one from MAGFest or at uh, one of the other is. cons. He's a goddamn emulator, man. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Quote, well, unquote. Quote unquote, indeed. Stamp. I think, isn't it on the PlayStation Store now that I think about it? I don't know. Uh, the fucking the, uh, remake or whatever, the remaster. That's Chrono Cross. Uh, I, thought they, I thought they remastered it on the not on the uh, Switch and then they ported it to the PlayStation. No, it hasn't been remastered yet. There's talks of it, but it hasn't been remastered yet. Ah. Uh, so I'm pl- but, what about, but what about a remake? Uh? Also has been talked about, but has less I mean, valid. If, if they do, if they do Chrono Trigger justice like they did Final Fantasy VII, I am all for it. <laughs> yeah. 
There you go. I would love that to get rebooted in that ma manner. That would be awesome. I would uh, I would only hope, but I'm also kind of scared for it. But uh, yes, also true. We can only you know wait and see. You know, Squ Square Enix got their bag. You know, from a lot of different games recently. So who knows what we'll see. Um, but okay. Uh, once again. RIP to Akira Toriyama. We'll miss you and thank you for everything you've done. On to the next topic. Uh, <laughs> so, apparently, uh, Toyota has unveiled that uh, they're planning on making a real life Pokemon bike, specific specifically um, a Miradon bike. We don't have to stick too long on this but like if you guys have looked at it the model that they have so far uh hey, how, how do y'all feel about it not getting lie stolen lie. quick it looks <laughs> horrible it looks horrible i it i think it does i me. think it does look a bit gaudy but i won't lie if i had the opportunity to like have it for free yeah okay, come back in Mirai on bike yes i would get my motorcycle license to just to get that bike yes Matter of fact, let me find out that that bike is even somewhat affordable. Nah, <laughs> chill, Magic. <laughs> like, if it's in, like, let me find out. Like, if it's in, like in like the ten grand range somewhere in there, uh, I might have to step out. You'll never be nah, allowed in my home again. That, it's gonna make Toyota a lot of money. First of all, Joey, I would never come to your home in the bike because nine times out of ten, I'm coming to your home and picking you up. What does that mean? You don't want me to ride on the back of the bike with you? That look that doesn't even look like a two person bike. It kinda <laughs> I don't think I'd want to ride on yeah. this bike with someone else. Yeah, like that doesn't look like a two person bike. <laughs> like it's just I mean I'd be so worried on the durability though. Like I think the paint would chip really easily. I think yeah, what? it just fall apart. Like that. It just fall apart. And I get my money back. <laughs> what you better do? put a warranty on there or something like? Yeah, better. <laughs> hey, yeah, that might fall apart. Hey, it's like hey, uh, but Toyota. But should this be true, I really think that Toyota would make a lot of money off of it just because it's Pokemon. Personally, I don't know what you're saying. Should it be true? Actually, because I think I think the problem with making a, a Pokemon bike is you're making it from the newer stuff the people who are buying like you're trying to normally when you're trying to get a lot of like a big ticket item like that you're trying to get the nostalgia and the people with the income right now not the newer generations playing the current games i mean we're right. playing the games yes but how hyped are we i mean there's five of us in here and only one of us is like yeah that bike looks good yeah, that's because I'm am I'm the only person who even thought about dra having a motorcycle before. I mean, my dad, yes. my dad gave I mean, me no. the gave me the idea because like he used to ride a motorcycle. He, he actually almost gave me one of his motorcycles, so yeah, I could have gotten I one. I, love, I know I love Harley Davidson. That, that that's my preferred motorcycle. No, we did not know you loved Harley Davidson, well, Christian. I don't know why you thought I had that information. <laughs> well, well, now there you go. Like, no, no. like we knew you loved the, that uh that biker show. I forgot what it was called. But I know you loved Harley Davidson. Oh, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, Sons of Anarchy. I'm sorry. I thought my friends knew about. Me. Yeah, we knew you loved Sons. I thought they deep died. I thought you only you only told. We are such good friends. I have psychic powers to read your. Yes, mind. When have we ever talked about a Harley Davidson, Christian? Christian. We never once. Christian, you've only spoken to me about it. That's that's. Oh 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 oh! oh I did. Oh yeah. oh well. Thank you, Sean. Sean has my back. What about you, Joey? Huh? As your Don't back. <laughs> he just told you you were wrong. You never told us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To wrap up this, uh, the one thing I'll say is that I'm glad they chose uh, Miradon instead of the other one because the other one I feel would look a lot more weird than this one. As because he wasn't really that one wasn't even really a bike it was a so let me actually quadruple right? since <laughs> yeah. we're on the topic of he used his arms and legs toyota making a pokemon bike so instead of that pokemon right if it was old school 
what if it was like a a, a jinx po- a poke if jinx was like the the um why are you just trying to be ugly there is nothing <laughs> there is nothing nothing <laughs> that made you say that other than <laughs> Like the closest thing if you're talking about old school <laughs> like, is make a, a just race, ugliness. Like, bicycle based on what uh, Misty's bike was so that way when somebody trashes it they can never pay you back for it. Ha, you mean yeah. the bike that Ash never paid her back for? I, I think I it. think he Maybe. did though. I think he did eventually. No, he didn't. It's just a running fucking joke. He Ash ain't paid pay that. Back. Ash ain't paid her back for no bike. <laughs> Yeah, at the end of the, Ash, the he never paid her back, Sean. Go, I, you know the, what? Look at the up, end Ash, of the I really journey, though, because if it did, at the end of the journey, yeah, I need you to go look. At the end of their journey, specifically Brock and Misty and Ash, that at the end of their journey when they stopped traveling together, he bought her a bike before they like I went their separate ways. Bought her a bike is not the same as paying her back for that, but that could have been a uh, inferior bike he got her. I don't, I don't know them. I, can, I got that for you. I'm not going to twist nipples like Joe's doing. Like, I just didn't know about it, period. <laughs> oh, I, I still don't know about it. <laughs> Her bike was repaired. I'm saying if that happened. By the end of Jodo. Okay, so there we go. It was just a repair. It wasn't a payback. So take it as you will. I, th- I think it's still. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still holding it over. I'm like, nigga, you never gave me the shit back for the bike. When they go back to through Viridian on the way to Brock and Misty's home, Nurse Joy reveals that she spent the last couple years repairing Misty's bike since she had nothing better to do. So Ash didn't do anything. <laughs> Let's right. go ahead and say that. Okay. Ash, yeah. Ash I guess his name would be Ash instead of Ash since he didn't really do anything. And... Yeah, got it. So that's... Uh, Alright, so <laughs> next topic now. <laughs> next topic. Okay. Mer- okay. Meridian <laughs> Toyota bike done. Alright. So... Uh, uh, anyone cares about old uh, Juice World's uh, girlfriend accusing him of selling late his late rapper clothes on OnlyFans? Well, you messed that all up. So Juice World's girlfriend is accused of selling uh, Juice World's clothes, and obviously Juice World is dead. Oh, and yeah. and no, I don't care. Oh, he's dead. Yes. Wow. Uh, I don't know. First off, I've never heard of this guy. That's, that that's, that's fair. Remember? Christian wasn't. I say Sean wasn't attacking you. He just said yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, I'm, 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 look, I barely know about the man himself. I only heard like two songs so, by him. And so I got. So I guess you could say he got juiced. No, squeeze. He got squeezed. Well, we're getting canceled. Yeah. Episode two. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Well. Uh, uh, thanks for everybody who had a hand uh, in destroying it. In short, it's, it's, it's messed up, but none of us care. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Um, uh, was like, it's not the first time, it's not the last time. People capitalize on fame, regardless of if it's dead fame or if it's you're still absolutely, at the top. Absolutely, absolutely. But it's funny that we talk about this because also um, there's a, there was an article as well about um, Vanessa. Uh, Hold on, let me correct you here. It was Kobe's parents, not Vanessa. Yeah. It wasn't. It, it was Kobe's parents, really? Yeah. Yes. They're the broke ones. Oof. Damn, Joe. Vanessa Shit. putting K- Kobe's ring on auction. No. It was Kobe's his, parents put the his ring. ring. Oh, okay. Let me look at this article you guys are speaking of. Well, that one I don't. I don't have the article up for that one right this yeah, second. Yeah, I see. Nah, so, okay. Kobe's parents. Yeah, they had a strained relationship. Okay. So, they probably just so I'm sure Vanessa's not giving them any money, and they need money. So here they are. So they put some of the memorabilia they had so, up for auction. Th- this That's really crazy. is some like messed up shit, right? Like, <laughs> and people, like, that is your kid. I mean, yeah, but that is that is his kid. But if you don't have a if you don't have money to pay for the house you got, what you gonna do? Be homeless? And if Probably. you're estranged, no, no. that's like it, it, in my mind, it takes away from saying that you're basically cool with selling memories of somebody. Now, it's like now, if I, I'm in terms of memorabilia, I'm assuming you mean things that are going to be close to Kobe and what he did. But how, like, how are, ring. We, talking? are we talking now? Was this ring given to his parents in like celebration? Is uh, what well, it was like a copy of one of his championship rings. 
It yeah. was a copy. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have, to be fair, I probably okay. wouldn't have sold that ring. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, like, like when it like, comes to selling like, like a, I, a, a ring, like, I, I can understand to some extent. Like, yeah. like, like if you wanted, if you wanted to, like, like, like a, the bills have would, to be paid. Selling like a they, ring to get your kid through they, college they, or something I feel like, like that. There's just better ways to have done it. Like what? Like they got nothing. Only thing they have of value is that stuff. They're I old. Mean, they're, well, we don't know anything about this situation. We don't know how much money they be getting. We don't know if any of them work. We don't know if they had thought about downsizing. They, they, I can tell you, they don't work. The <laughs> they don't get. They have no income. I because I you know, this is sports ball. This is my stuff. They, they don't work. They have no income. And they How old is they have no income, no SSI, no retirement, no nothing. Because well, Kobe's father so, was a basketball player, so they so were just living. They don't off get of a Kobe? retirement, huh? Were they just living off of Kobe? I'm not downplaying them for that. I was like, yeah, asking. how were they living? How were they living this long without problems? Then, well, like yeah, they, like the Kobe and uh, like if I had the money, yeah, I would be supporting my my parents too, yeah. so they don't have yeah, to work and yeah. all that. But I just yeah, want to have an idea. Much, there's also no, nah, but it, uh, oh, no. I was I was gonna say it was like, but he if somebody he was a professional b- uh, basketball player and he didn't you know invest his money properly, he didn't set everything up. This is ba- this is back in the day when firefighters made more than basketball players. He's old. Firefighters. Dang. I don't. Yeah, like don't most really basketball know. players back in the day had to have a job during the summer just to get the bills paid. Like basketball players did like not make a lot of money back, back in, in the day. day. If they are still alive, there the others that are not in the limelight. Or like his old old. Okay, that's okay. interesting. So, like talk about Mike Tyson. Like it's messed up on all ends, but you know. I was like, I can see it on both. I can see, you know, you need to pay the bills. I'm saying there's definitely better. There's definitely better ways because there's no way that you could have exhausted everything up until that. Because even that is a short term situation. What happens when that money runs out? You're going to be back to selling more shit. Like, what you have a plan? Yeah, exactly. If you haven't had a plan this long, then why are we going to? Why do we care? Why does anybody care about this? If we're just basically following somebody's descent into poverty and homelessness? What yeah. sense does that make at all for us to even pay attention to it? Yeah, because if you, if you didn't pull yourself out prior, it, unless this is enough, like this memorabilia is enough to live for forty years or whatever, which it's not life expectancy. You're you're like you said, Kadri. It's you're just going to be back to square one in X amount of time. Yeah. A lot now, of people, that's do- in theory, what life insurance would be for if if they cared enough to. If, if the person who passed cared enough to go, oh, I want to make sure my girlfriend, my parents, my whomever is set when I'm gone. Shit, from what it sounds like, they don't even have those type of backup plans. Like, if somebody, if you don't have... Now, to, now, to be fair, well, to be fair, that is the standard. They have enough, like, Kobe's, Kobe, like, Vanessa has enough money, but, you know, Vanessa don't mess parents. with them. Yeah. Because they yeah, never messed with her. Parents. Not really. I'm not really worried about her. At the same time, there. It's not saying it in a mean way or vindictive way. It's that she's not famous. Like at this point, she's gonna end up having war, or eventually end up having what most people want is just a life out of that limelight because it's no longer involving Kobe. It's not Kobe. It's not gonna be Kobe's wife oh. after a while. It's just oh, Vanessa is famous. Another person on the street. What the fuck is she famous for? For being Kobe's wife. <laughs> okay, moving on. Just, just because Kobe's dead does not mean she's no longer uh. famous. Uh, I, I get, I get what you're saying. It's just not to that level. I'm not saying it's not going to be that same fame. Yeah. Oh no, no! Like she's kind of like been mythologized. Mike Tyson's fighting Jake Paul. We'll find yes, out is. soon enough. All right, we'll we'll skip to the next topic. <laughs> but to sum yeah, that up, Christian really wants to talk about this one. It's, it's mixed for the oh Vanessa thing, but yeah, that's the current news. With that Mike Tyson to fight Jake Paul in July. Uh what do you what is y'all input on this this is happening and uh, a lot of people feel uh, as of before people were like saying that mike was more likely to just end this or if jake paul was to win um people would just be mad at jake paul so it'd be like a double-edged sword for jake but now lately it looks like a lot of people are saying that jake actually might beat um mike because they're saying that he actually has been 
putting in a lot of work. Nobody thinks Absolutely that not. in a regular boxing match with no setup and no rules that Jake Paul would beat Mike Tyson. I don't know what the no. fuck you've been reading that said that. Nobody I don't believes know the type that. Of you've been reading about that shit's insane. I'm going to challenge you, and I'm going to say that Jake Paul is going to basically it's going to basically be a Family Guy situation where Mike Tyson is whipping on Jake Paul, and then he keeps getting back up, and then he passes out. That's what I think is going to happen. That, oh my that, gosh. That, so you didn't have any actual input to the thing. Gotcha. <laughs> Will there be ear protection? Well, the I need to <laughs> that's see. That's the thing. That's the thing. A lot of those rules we don't know. Will Will okay, Jake Paul so be wearing headgear? On, a, on yeah, on a point of the of the um the fight, there have been plenty of rumors popping around where it's like, oh, the contract stated that you know Logan Paul can jump into the fucking fight and it's crazy and shit. Shit stated where he uh, Logan Paul or Jake Paul is allowed to wear protective gear and it's kind of whatever. There's gonna be, we don't know what the actual fight's gonna entail. Now, if you're talking about a straight up, like, professional boxing match versus Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, Jake Paul is getting his shit rocked. No Mike way, Tyson shape, or form. Is, Mike Tyson is fucking him up. Like, Jake Paul ain't even big Jake, enough. It's, it's, uh, he's not, he's not a bad fighter. He's not. Because in the fights that he has had, he's actually done very well. He's won. Yeah. But he's, he's not, he's not this. This is not what he wants. See how Mike Tyson train is, is training right now, like, bro. No, yeah. <laughs> like this man's no. training. Like this man's training like he's in his prime. Like he's attempting exactly. hard. Like he's got hardcore training regimens for three weeks. Our hardcore training regimen. That man is this going to demolish him. His old, this nigga said he misses him over his old self. That he literally <laughs> said that. He literally said that. But in, a, what, in, a art, in an article or like in a little he, video? In, 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 it was an interview. An interview. Hold okay. on. Interview. Yeah, it was an interview. Was Hold it? on a second, though. Isn't that the sentiment of any old person, though? No, he's. No, he said no, he's not like. In this situation, no. no. Yeah, in his case, no. No. This is it's one of those. Of like, I miss who I was. No. Yeah, I miss. No. He, like, he misses it and then simultaneously is afraid of it. Exactly. Yeah. He's had interviews where he is. Like, he stated he's afraid of the type of violence that he's able to inflict on people. God, yeah. He's afraid for somebody to actually push him to that point. Well, okay. going after the air situation, yeah, makes sense. Right. But okay, yeah. Well, I guess we'll see when the fight happens in July. But yeah, I'm still in the factor of believing that Mike Tyson would win the fight. Yes, but one thousand percent. We'll see when July hits. Okay. Well, um, so with Jake Paul. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um. All right. So let's get into uh, a little bit of uh, gaming stuff right here. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has released, and for those that know, uh, at least three mem- well, at least three to four members of the Lunchbox have been playing it like that, and uh, you know. Some have been able to see us, Cadre. You've been able to see us play it a bit too. Um, I actually want to start with you first, as someone who's just on the outside. From what you've seen for, for so far, what do you think of uh, Final Fantasy VII? Honestly, I've been kind of yeah. I have been in and out watching you guys play. Generally, I try to I try to get the first person view for you most of the time because you you're a little more meticulous with the stuff that you do you take your time now it's a good thing and a bad thing i hate it sometimes but i do love that you take your time on shit because i get to see a little more of it yeah. so so far though i'm i'm liking everything that mini games are always fun as shit the storyline is always gripping i can't oh shit um i'm being eaten right now i'm sorry i'm actually i'm gonna die it's mad over here playing dragon dog <laughs> We'll I get, definitely we'll, am. We'll oh, get to that I'm, part soon enough, though. <laughs> yeah, so we'll get to that. But so far, so far, it has. Been, um, I was. I played the original Final Fantasy VII, but I didn't really have an interest in playing the remake for it. There were very few like Final Fantasies that I'm like, you know what? I really want to run this back. But in the sense of how what I expect the game to be, it's just as good as I thought it would be. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's go. Let's like build up Zemus. You only got a little bit of time actually playing it, but uh, what are your inputs so far? So, I, I basically completely finished the first zone as soon as you leave uh, Midgar. And then I mm-hmm. got to, I think that's the Junan area. The yeah, Junan. 
Yeah, I haven't done much in it though. Um, so far, I'm I'm definitely enjoying it. It feels like there's a lot more to do than in the first one. It does feel like because of that, the story is slower because I am trying to do everything. <laughs> um, but all in all, I'm I'm pretty satisfied. It feels like they built upon the world without like they, they developed the world rather than changing the world. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Um, I do feel like it was a little bit of a weird transition on maybe I should have just watched the the story thus far even though I played the game it just it felt like there's a little bit of a I remember beating Sephiroth and then I don't remember anything else really happening so did you uh, watch the ending cutscene of remake like the I did but at the maybe, credits? I, maybe I don't remember it now yeah. did you play intergrade no I did not integrate what that is kind of important a little bit as someone who finished integrate did you finish it yet joe no okay yeah as someone who finished into integrate um i i do feel like it it like adds a little extra layer onto everything um mashing together um by the point by the time that you meet up with yuffie uh and it adds more depth to the story um but that's a personal piece on my point. Um, but yeah, uh, seems like Christian is dealing with something at the moment. Uh, Magic, how about you go while we wait for Christian? All right, yeah. So I have played Final Fantasy VII, as he's already said. I played it on dynamic mode. Um, over 140 hours in. I've done the main story already. Uh did all the side quests did all the quests i'm just kind of working on platinum the game right now and i loved it there was not a moment where i was like man this sucks or i'm bored like just all around really loved the game uh it was just like the story it was great uh, i'm a little biased because final fantasy Seven was my favorite rpg back in the day so a little biased and it just everything seeing everything come to life like this the voice acting was incredible the set pieces was incredible uh the gameplay is pretty much just like final fantasy 7 remake which was a really good game so game broke don't fix it uh like you always said the mini games it all adds playtime and replayability to the game like i love the piano i as think they know i tried now that i think about it i think christian um finished integrate as well um, I finished all of them, yes. And let me just tell you, that game was fucking epic. Um, was def definitely exceeded my expectations. All right, that's good. It definitely exceeded my expectations, um, as I thought. Um, blew me away. Um, integrate um, was um, integrate. I won't lie, was a little tricky at first, but when I got when I got used to her gameplay. It was cool. Um, definitely, mm, man. Uh, I really wish that y'all. Do you have a um, specific area you you like most in uh, remake uh, rebirth? Rebirth. Yeah. Um, I should have asked that to all y'all, but yeah. Um, are y'all cool with me saying? Because I I know Zemus and Kazuya didn't finish it, so I'm not. Oh, you're not telling. I, I haven't played it yet. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to tell okay. a story, just the area. Um, Gungaga. Gungaga? Okay. Yeah, I don't remember, because I don't remember in the original, I had to go back, but apparently, yeah, you did make a stop to Gungaga, but it was optional in the original. Oh, I didn't remember that. Yes, I had to go back, because I didn't remember visiting that area. I, I don't remember. So I, ha I went back to the original, yeah, but it was, that was an optional thing. Okay. I don't remember it very. I remember the name. I don't remember it in the original very well. Yeah, Gung, yeah, Gungaga is Zach's hometown. If for anyone who who didn't play Crisis Core. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do remember going there because Aerith, or I think it was Aerith, uh, gives a little bit of like, oh yeah, this is who Zach was. This is what I remember oh. of him. Yeah, she, she does it in Rebirth as well. So. Okay. But in a slightly different way, I think. Um. Makes sense. I can't really ask that quite 
this question to you, Zemus, because uh, obviously you've only been to two areas that you kind of already knew about. So, but mm -hmm. uh, Magic, what about you? Do you have a s specific favorite area in the game? Uh, in terms of just how it looks. Yeah. Oh, or uh, or even the combat for, of the of the monsters there and stuff. Like in terms of how it looks and everything. Uh. Costa del Sol and the Golden Saucer. <laughs> That's kind of really? That's a, a one that I think a lot of people will enjoy. Really like because that. of a certain moment, but uh, yeah. In yeah. terms of uh, in terms of like traversal and everything, uh, I like Nebel. I was gonna say the same thing. Uh, Nebel, Nebel, Nebel. Nebel is my favorite uh, zone that uh, we went to in the game, and. It's not just because of uh, the ocean chocobos, because the chocobos are different in each region, but uh, it just- A thousand percent because of the chocobo for me. Oh, for real? Yeah. I like it just because of the, the landscape. It, it's like, it has a nice like bounce of like the water, like trudging through different areas. And like, there's a lot of different types of caves that you can go into that aren't necessarily part of a, a live stream and stuff and uh the towers actually to me the towers in that that area do a much better job of allowing you to see a uh, clear uh view of like where you're heading and stuff and what's up in the horizon stuff like grasslands did a good job of that too but there was a, a couple of moments where uh towers were like kind of like blocked by mountainsides so you couldn't like really look in the area that you're gonna be running in it's more so like views of the uh ocean for the most part but mm -hmm. nebu i felt like you had a a great view of every location that you was going to for each tower you hit so i enjoyed that also of course uh i like seeing nebu in daytime you know it looks real nice so yeah uh and as for me I've been I've been enjoying the game a lot. I tried to finish it before we did this podcast, but sadly wasn't able to get that done. I'm literally like one chapter away, so probably by the time this this podcast is over, and or by the time this podcast gets out, I'll have already finished the game because um, I plan on finishing it tonight. But overall, I've enjoyed the experience of the game. Um, I will say one thing. I do have one qualm. Some of the mini games I feel are a little bullshit or doesn't have like enough going on to keep me interested. That that's a personal opinion of mine. That doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that it's not good or anything. It's just in terms of my taste. Felt Joe about to jump. <laughs> no, I, I I understand because this is like Joe's game game of the year. Oh, I'm sorry, the game of the year. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, the game of the year. There you go, game of the year. But, but yeah, not not all of the mini games have a bunch of substance to it. No, some of it's just literally just a time. Yeah, it's just a time if you remember in the original one, gold now, mini games were basically all bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Now I don't think any of them was just unfair. Which one did you thought was unfair? The mushroom. <laughs> I, I fucking hate now, the mushroom now, one, man. Now, I'm sorry. Now, I, look. That, that was more of a quest. Like, that was more of a quest than a mini game, but it was. But but you could have for sure. That you could have just re. You could have just retried it. I, right, I, I I understand that, Joe. But just Joe, just going off of initial play playthrough and moment, like what hit for me was that it was not that intuitive in the first try in the first couple of tries of it, and I got it. Little, I I almost got it. I thought I had it at one point and then we got to the last portion and then it just like really fucked up fucked me over. So I have a bad taste in my mouth from that. But that's, that, that he believes that's what caused him having a air as his special someone, so that's why he's salty about it. I mean that it that's definitely a part a part of it, yeah, but just in general, I wouldn't want to do that mini game ever again. Oh yeah, no, it wasn't fun. Like that, that mini game wasn't like Oh yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah like, I'll, no. I'll, I'll, I'll sit here and I won't deny I am pissed that that did screw with my ability to uh, have a date with uh, Arif. Like, 
but at the, at the end of the day, I don't like the, the mini game. That one specifically. But overall, game is great. I think that uh, for the most part, all of us are in the minds that it definitely is a game of the year contender. Um, and winner, <laughs> contender only. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what um, what the next game is gonna actually be. Hell, even what it's gonna even gonna be called, because you know this was Rebirth. So, what do you reunion. think? Uh, reunion. Didn't they use Reunion though for Cross Score? Like the the, the reboot, isn't it? Uh-huh. Cross Score Reunion. Might be. Yes, it is. Okay, so they they wouldn't be able to use that name. I don't think. Sure, sure they could. Okay, Joe. <laughs> um, before we bounce off of uh, Final Fantasy VII, uh, I, I also wanted to say that um, there was talk from the developer that they were considering uh, Queen's Blood expansion, which is a card game in the game. I knew it. And uh, yeah, yeah. they Can't are wait. they're interested in uh, po- the possibility of like making. I think either. I think they're basically kind of leading to the idea of more so more battles you could do against different people in the game rather than what we really would like which is an online uh, battle i think online would be a really fun thing for uh, queen's blood because once you get like oh, enough cards and mess around with it more it's definitely it's definitely a mm-hmm. blast i just don't really <clears throat> trust uh trust them to do any sort of online card game thing because they really tried to milk the crap out of uh, Tetra, uh, Tetra Masters. Tetra, Tetra Master, Tetra, Tetra Triad. Tetra, what? Triad is eight. Triple Triad, my nigga. Triple, triad. triple triad. Yeah, Triple I Triad is eight, and nine is uh, Tetra Master. Okay. I don't remember which one it was, but it was <laughs> when they had Final Fantasy XI. You had to pay separately for their. Um, plays on or whatever like they're basically their launcher you had to pay for in order to have access to the card game as a completely separate game hmm. all of that so is how long ago was that my guy 30 years ago 11 was a game so yeah probably like 20 you need to get over it <laughs> I mean, we could say that now, but if it if it does yeah, end but, up happening, no, I know, I, I know, but it's just he sounded very salty about something that was twenty years ago. Like I don't trust these niggas. Like that was twenty years ago. Right, and you think that they that companies have gotten more consumer friendly over twenty years, right? That's just depends. Like, do I think that they would charge fifteen dollars to play Queen's Blood online? No, I do not, Zemus. Listen, I don't put nothing past. Right, yeah, Square Enix has Thank been you. good, good at some points, nah, but nah, but they but they I have some doubts. No, no, give me wrong. I'm not a Square. I'm not a Square Enix super fan. By all means, I know how I feel about uh, what they did to Kingdom Hearts. If they made niggas buy a sixty dollar game and then turn around and and bought a uh, a, a thirty dollar uh, monthly subscription just to keep playing Final Fantasy fourteen, I don't put nothing past. Nigga, that is a online s- service game. That's that's how all of them are. That's how fucking uh. No, no. no <laughs> yeah, no, no. that's how fucking uh. What the fuck is? What, what the fuck is this? That's, that's how Warcraft are. is, and that's how those no, type of games all, are. If not all MMO RPGs are are uh, subscription. Both based. of those numbers. Yeah. Are over exaggerated, but yeah, that is the general. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's, yeah, it's an MMO RPG. That's how it is. That's what they do. <laughs> Yeah, usually it's like 30 or 40 to start, including for every expansion, and then 15 a month. I guess it comes down to how the content... An expansion is one thing, but I'm talking about to actually continue to play the game. That's Nigga, the that's what... Did you not just hear him say it's like 15 a month for like most games like that? I did not hear him. But yeah. No. Now listen to our friends. <laughs> I know you ain't talking. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes, I am. Thank, the, thank you for at, thank you for listening to me. At the end of the day, though, um, you know, we don't know what what direction this can take, but I I would be interested in it. I just I just hope that they don't take the more uh, 
darker micro tra- transaction way with the game that, that that's the thing that would bug me the most if it's like some really crummy uh deals for us uh, cards or you know what that or even like a, in terms of the service plan because they said they wanted to double down on those oh my god nfts please let, let that fade from existence please <laughs> the dumbest idea ever please but, John, don't you want to pay for a receipt to something that you don't actually own? Boy, would I? <laughs> but, oh. yeah, Final Fantasy VII, overall, looking for, f- um, definitely looking forward to finishing it, and uh, I think a lot of people in general enjoyed the game, so, yeah. Uh, still sticking to Final Fantasy news at the moment. Uh <laughs> Final Fantasy IX, uh, there's a rumor that suggests that there's a rumor to suggest that there will be a remake for uh, remake, but it will be modest compared to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and remake, obviously. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I look Final Fantasy IX is my favorite Final Fantasy of all time, and. I knew that I couldn't expect seven. I mean, ex- fe- seven yeah, expect it. Exactly. Um, but if they're going to do a remake, I just hope that they put a little more heart into it because, like, this is still like a big game, I feel, in a couple aspects because this is actually like more of a vision of what the creator wanted originally down, um, back then mm-hmm. for uh, the series. He wanted to get back to the more fantasy aspect and medieval time thing and i felt they did a great job with this game all the characters were appealing and i can only hope that it, the I, one I don't, time i hated the blue mage <laughs> the one t- yes <laughs> now i trust them to do a good job remaking the game obviously like you said it's not going to be to the scale of final fantasy 7 because well nine just wasn't as big of a game as 7 was as far as uh, popularity mainstream was, and just even spinoffs and whatnot. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah I, I would hope if they do it, they also like try to add a little more depth to the characters, just like they did with Seven. Um, one of the weakest characters I'll say in, in uh, I think every Final Fantasy tends to have like at least one character that's somewhat weaker than the others. And for nine, it was definitely the character Armorant. He kind of was just—he was the whatever the character. Red dragoon person, right? Well, he wasn't a dragoon fighter, but uh, he was—he was, he was uh, he was basically like Tifa. He was a uh, bo- he boxed and stuff. He would uh, okay. martial arts and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, he definitely would need a little more work because he would basically just say this the most out of the world out of the world stuff and then when you're conf- when he's confronted he's just like whatever stuff <clears throat> so if he got fixed i'd yep. uh really appreciate that um ask me somebody i have an enough somebody tell me that hey. somebody anybody else got uh any piece to say on this cadre baby girl i'm the band for the big ba so no I guess not. All right. <laughs> we'll move uh, on. Boom, 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 boom. Can um, you, Joey, can you hear Sean? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> um, on purpose. Final, on, purpose. <laughs> on purpose, yeah. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> uh, what is this? Uh, Final Fantasy 16 Dawn Trail expansion. Uh, we by this point we it was a <laughs> tease, but we actually got like more gameplay um, on it. Uh, I looked at it, looked like more Final Fantasy 16. Uh, but I heard that they actually aimed to like clear up some questions that people had at the end of 16 um, with uh, this game um, game expansion. So I'm kind of interested, and I may actually go back and uh, play it. Uh, any of y'all interested in this information? In what, 14? 16. No, 16. 16. Oh, 16. Five. 16. No. 
No. I'm I'm definitely interested. Um, I don't know how high on my list of wanting to do things it is, but yeah, I'm in the same category. It's generally, the, the standard problem of it's like by the time I get to the end game, I generally just want to finish. I don't want to go back and do everything. Right. So if if you prevented me from doing some of the side quests because you just locked them away i'm likely to just not do them now and dlc oftentimes has that that same issue to me well this expansion is gonna just be focused on like story alone there's no not gonna be any side missions that you have to do in it um at the very least they want to keep you like focused on what they're the story the information they're trying to tell you i more mean that this this is the whole dlc is basically a side story because you've already finished the main plot and so it's do you want to play the game again that's more of an uphill battle for me than yeah it was already there i'll I'll play it like it was already finished okay Hmm. and i i'm pretty sure sure that's the same thing for joe as it is for kadri um not really that interested in going back which is fine. Am I saying that correct, Magic? Uh, pretty much. I didn't finish 16, so. Yeah. Neither did I. Yeah, I think only me, y- you, and Christian finished it, seems. Ah, uh, gotcha. Um, s- since Amazing Christian Man has randomly vanished, uh, before we go to the f- game I have here, we'll dive into Dragon's Dogma 2 first. Uh, so this is a sequel, obviously, but you don't have to play the first one to get into this game or to understand what's happening. Cadre Bandit, give us your inputs as you're the only one out of all of us who has actually played the game. I've never played this game a day in my life. I don't know why he's lying to me. Yeah. Okay. He's literally <laughs> on it right now. <laughs> I hold on. Let me let me switch my online status to offline. I'm uh, not on it uh, currently. Okay. Yeah. Too oh, late. <laughs> like, um. Yeah, no. Honestly, it's uh getting, getting gobbled up by something on Dragon's Dogma earlier in the stream. Yeah. It, it's like I I actually I I wasn't getting eaten. I was actually just getting crushed. It was a golem. He had me in his uh, in his rocks. It was just crushing my body. So it was uh, uh-huh. that's pretty cool. Um. Honestly. I want to explain this game in a way that I think it's going to make sense to the game itself because it doesn't feel like a normal RPG fantasy type game. This is what I imagine it would be like if I if you were like East Guide into another world. The way that the game interacts with itself, the way that the AI can change, the way that the story can change depending on what you do. Most games, you know, they when they're like that, they're pretty interactive. This one feels more real. Like, and I think one of the things that does that is there is permadeath on this game as well. So in terms of NPCs and people around, because they, the towns, one of the other big things, towns can be attacked. In the, so a troll could bust through the front gate and just fuck everything up, depending on how like far it can get into the city. It can kill some uh, some necessary NPCs. And then you have to use a specific item to bring them back to life. But if their bodies get put in the morgue, like embalmed, uh, all that shit, and then put in the morgue, you can't bring them back. It's like, they've already chopped your body up. So it's got a more realistic adventure feel to it. I think the only thing that might upgrade that a bit is if you had something like bounties. Because uh, it has enough monsters where a bounty system would be crazy in this game. It would make it more of a widespread RPG. What but because of the single player aspect, Dragon's, Dragon's, Dogma. Dragon's Dogma 2. Huh? But Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah, overall, it's it's a very good game. In itself, there's a lot of content. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. There's a lot of stuff you can miss. There's a lot of nooks and crannies. There's places I haven't even fully discovered just from the first part that I would I need to go back and do because don't take your time. You can't fill out the map. But if you do fill out the map, there's a lot of base content here. So you'd say that there's a lot of replayability to it? On a New Game Plus system, it's this right here is on the on the realm close to Elden Ring. Okay. Like, it doesn't seem as large, in my opinion. I'm only in the second area, but I'm assuming it's this area and then like one more half area. 
So in terms of like how large it is, it's not on that same level. But yeah, there's I can see you going through this and doing it again. Okay. Do you think that? Do you feel like there's a good amount of environments in it? The uh... the the way the environment plays, it it's not it doesn't change drastically, honestly. Okay. Uh, at least not a lot. So in the first part, you're pretty much fighting in forests and fighting in like 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 rocky battlegrounds, castles, things like that. And then the second part, like the second area that I'm in, I'm in a desert area. So far, it's just it's just like a, like a savanna, like a like a score if you played Ark Scorched Earth. It's just a bunch of mountains with like sand mountains and. But rocks. is there like, it's the really nothing? Here. It's not uh, poisonous swamp level. Oh no, not that I've seen. Not oh, that I've seen. What? That, what? Funny enough, like I, I figured that was going to be somewhere too, because something like that needs to happen. There is a lot of poisonous creatures, and I think one of the fun things about this game is that bosses are interactable anywhere on the map. There are certain locations where they can spawn, like where bosses spawn or like mini boss level spawn, but the type of boss it is can change. Uh, there are some that are absolutely scripted. Like there was a cave I went through, and I was looking forward to this cave. Because in this cave, you fight, you fight two trolls, a minotaur, a chimera, and the first time I've ever seen this this thing before, you fight a lich. I've oh. never fought a lich before in this game. So when I ran into that thing, it definitely was a little wild. The uh, the diversity of the the enemies you fight is pretty good too. Okay, uh, cool. I'm I'm glad to hear about that diversity for the enemies too. Because fighting like the same troll or goblin I and mean, stuff. Like- could, could get a little you, much at some point but I, i'm sure the double classes helps with like mixing up like how you interact with them oh as yeah well. the vocations and the things you can do even if you are because you are going to be fighting generally the two types of enemies you're going to be fighting quite a bit is going to be goblins and harpies like they told you that from the get-go they're like these are common enemy types you're going to be fighting a lot of these you fight variations of them later on and the variations do get smarter is what i've noticed like some of them like the I just fought the upgraded harpy. This yeah, motherfucker yeah, ran. Yeah, it, it, yeah, oh shit! It swooped down, so it was getting hit by my mage. So it real. I I don't know if it realized or if it just happened to be this way. But it focused my mage. It kept trying to pick my mage up and throw it out of battle, and then come back and fight us. Like it was trying to get rid of the range on our. T- okay. So Smart AI. I don't know if it's coincidence or if the AI is yeah, like if it's a learning AI, but it it was a legitimate sound like sound thing a lot of people even see it like you see it on reddit quite a bit where the harpies will just pick pick up a pawn and drop it off the side of a mountain or it's like well now you're out of the fight let's focus on the other three i wouldn't be surprised if they're smart though because from what i've been hearing about the pawn system it's pretty intricate because i've watched like some people play mm-hmm. it and like i saw that like there's like things where if a person had a pawn and then like you you get that pawn from online to because that's the online system for the game, uh, a pawn system, where it's a, yep. another player's um, created pawn. Their basically their ally goes into another world and help out other players that are playing through the game. But um, yep. the pawn uh, actually memorizes things that happened in the world that they interacted with, and they will point out yes. if like there was like a treasure chest in like a certain area that they already went to. They're like, oh, my master. At, and me actually found a chest over there would you like me to guide you to it and you could be like yes and then they'll take you over to like that chest and i think yep. that's a really cool like interesting thing and that the same thing applies for battles as well which um the, talking kind of fast oh, there yeah. sean the pawn system like you said it's very intricate and in what you i what i'm pretty sure you were leaning into the battle system is that if a pawn has fought something before and you haven't fought it it will tell you what it's weak to but it's like, oh, it's an ogre. It's weak to lightning. Like, oh, it's a heartbeat. It's weak to fire. Yeah. It'll tell you so you don't have to guess. Now, right. the only problem I have with that is that you do something like that so early in the game, you don't really have, unless you go like a mage or something, you don't have a variety of skills to be able to swap up and be like, oh, this thing's weak to ice. Let me use an ice move. This thing's weak to fire. Let me use a fire move. Oh, this thing's weak to lightning. Let me use a lightning move. It is kind of like a bit in mid, like, mid-game, mid late-game type situation where you start to get no uh, you start to get your buffs and things like that that you can do different spells you start to find tomes where you can use spells i think that's another thing this is uh like skyrim scrolls you can find tomes throughout the world that allow you to use magic even if you're not on a magic class and the uh-huh. tomes don't really weigh a lot so like i have like 
five. No, I have oh, no, no, I have eight tomes on me right now. I have a heal. I have a silence. I have a bunch of fire, ice, and lightning shit. So I have stuff just so in case. You equip that like instead of a sword type of thing. No, you just so you got to use it. That, the problem that okay. So this is now you're gonna look at a downside. If you uh, if you hold L one, it pulls up or L one for PS five, it pulls up your switch weapon skills. So it shows you what your weapon skills are on the right, but it shows you your item menu on the left. Now, as far as I know, and I haven't been able to figure out if I do this, you can't change what's on that bar. So up on the D-pad is always going to be a healing item. Down on the D-pad is always going to be a stamina item. Right on the D-pad is always going to be a lantern item. And then left on the D-pad automatically opens up your item menu. Now, if you do that, it'll because it's a single player game, it'll pause it and that'll allow you to walk over to the book, hit X, hit use, and then you'll, once you come out of the, once you get used, it'll pull you out of the menu and you'll start casting. So if you can position yourself in a way, all right, cool, if I was to fire it from right here, it's gonna hit and then use the spell, that's how it works. But it's not something you can put on a hot bar and just use it whenever. I think that would be a bit chaotic to be completely honest with you, because you, uh, there is, like I said, permadeath and wanted system in this game. You can kill civilians. So if you activate a high salamander fire spell in the middle of a crowded area and kill 20 people, you're going to jail. You don't really, uh, you really have a choice. But I wanted some. Like, yeah, you got a 20 man kill streak right there because you misclick. You yeah, already talked about Rise of Runner, right? No, not at all. Ah. Ah. We were waiting for you. Yeah. Ah. Ah. But um, okay. Uh, I'm d I'm definitely looking forward to trying Dragon's Dogma. I, I was planning on getting it next paycheck, uh, but uh, it's a lot of games like piling on. So I'm I'm trying to figure out how I want to go about it, especially since I'm playing uh, still trying to finish up Rise of Ronin. But uh, so I want to finish Rise of Ronin myself, and then I can give you my proper notice between those few games, the few games we've played so far. But Joe put in his Final Fantasy VII. I'll, I'll, so far, I'm gonna put in Dragon's Dogma for Game of the Year. It's either gonna be this. Or I, I haven't. You're not I the first person I heard say that. Yeah. So well, I'm not yeah, surprised. I'm, it's a great game. Um. Oh shit! Perfect. One second. I'll be back. Okay. Uh, I guess we can, because you don't really have anything to say about Dragon's Dogma yet, right? Um, Magic. Nope, nothing to say. Uh, I haven't played it. Haven't seen gameplay other than like trailers, so I don't really got much to say about it. Okay. And same about you, right, Magic? I mean, <laughs> yeah, Christian Ren. Don't have much <laughs> to say. <Stop. laughs> <laughs> not, not really yeah. to say on it like, right yeah, now. Yeah, I got yeah, okay. not, uh, yeah, I don't see myself getting that game. Okay, that's fair. All right, so while we're waiting for Cadre to get back, uh. We'll start with you, Christian. Uh, Ronin, Rise of the Samurai. I think it, it definitely is a fun Did game. Did I say that right? Hold up. Hold up. Hey, Rise of the Ronin. Ronin. Uh, I just Rise of the Ronin, but I'm, I'm trying to ignore it. Um, <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> um, Go ahead. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good game. It's not a bad game. It's a good game. Uh, it's a good game. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, I can see what, the, I can see what people... Or complain about like it's a little glitchy um from yeah so um from the um the combat the combat is dope it's probably the my favorite part of that game the combat the interaction seems kind of dry but for the most part i can definitely see myself doing another playthrough because it is kind of cool to um it is kind of cool to like basically come up with different ways of killing your enemy you know the parrying system is dope i love it um but i think my only complaint about the game a couple of complaints about the game is, is i wish the interactions wasn't so dry and um i mean huh, i wish i mean it's just an avatar right but <laughs> i wish they had the avatar had more of a personality you know versus you know you just pick a response and you just gotta imagine how he's saying it mm -hmm. versus you know us just hearing him saying like we like we rarely really hear him speak like that unless it's like interactions with his blade twin which Other is wild that, which is wild because the blade twin seems to be the only time that he actually like 
talks to Hawk. anybody. Yeah. Besides when he talked to his uh his blade master. I mean the voiceless protagonist is kind of a normal thing in those type of games though. It's not really I not get new. that. I get that, but like if you're gonna if you're gonna incorporate like some voice acting in general, like some like we've played Neo and a couple of the other games in the past. Like, if you're gonna have it where he actually d- can speak to some of the char- characters, why not just have him say a little bit more? Then I'm, I don't need him to say something to every single thing, but like a little more dialogue, I think would have went a long way to. You help know what game I yourself. think did it well, even though the main character didn't say a word, but everyone else did, and it was done well. Sekiro. You know it. Breath of the Wild. Oh. Now Link <laughs> does talk. He just goes, he just says gibberish. Yeah. Gibberish. Um I'll go I'll go ahead real quick on this topic. Um So I'm enjoying Ro- Rise of Ronin. It took a while for me to actually actually really enjoy it, in my personal opinion, because um it felt a little bland at first. But once I got like a good amount of the skills and the glider. Uh, things got a little more uh, creative of how I can like go about handling combat. I've definitely been going more of the stealth aspect than more of uh, um, f- fighting uh, because personally, I actually don't really like the counter s- um, spark. I think that uh, it's a little shaky on how it works. And in general, with mm-hmm. um, with the uh, what's what's it called again? Intimidation strikes. It seems like there's like a oh uh, like I know a, what you're talking about like a two or three second um, delay and what you when you actually should be doing the Counter Strike and it's so hard to actually see in action with their animations because of the dark veil that's going over them you can't just go off of them when they just charge at you or like even necessarily when they're like right on top of you because like you'll probably still miss like ninety percent of the time there's an actual time frame. That you have to get on point, and it's weird. Each character, in my opinion, well, th- each enemy. Um, I also don't like that there's some enemies. Well, not, not some enemies. Almost all the enemies. You'll you'll have a moment where you're like you're like cutting up an enemy and stuff, and then they'll be in the stun animation and stuff, such. But then there's like random moments when you're like cutting an enemy, and then like. The stun animation does not pop up and it's not even like it's something that you can like predict. It's it's kind of random when they when they can't do it. And it annoys the hell out of me. Like I'll be cutting an enemy, I'll get my slices off, and then um, I'll do a counter spark. And then uh, I can go ahead and do the slices again, but then they can get the another attack in right away. You have to counter each hit is what they were saying um that comes your way but you also would be it's not necessarily reliable they also they kind of push you to dodge as well and to some degree i find that to be a little bit of a flaw i'm fine with dodging attacks and all but like when it's like clearly obvious that they should be getting stunned i feel like there's no reason that they should be like powering through and just attacking through like it's it's an annoying super type of super armor that they have going on with it and i I I'm not really for it, but all negative said, I am enjoying it. The further I get, go along in it, and the open world, it's a bit bland. Um, and they're doing that Ubisoft thing where they're pl- piling on way too many icons on the map instead of letting you like discover stuff more naturally. I think that that would have gone along a better way. A lot of games are doing this nowadays, um, much better. Elden Ring. Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild. Uh, of course, I'm going to say those two games. Um, Sekiro, Sekiro, even like th- there's just a lot of games that I feel do it better. Hell, even Armored Core did it better. But again, these are just my opinions. I can't speak for the others. Uh, Zemus, you why wanna- you say? Why'd you say a game from the same friends? You said Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild. You could just say, you know, Zelda. Zelda's nah, still you brought. Know why he did what he did. <laughs> you know why he's gonna he did say what Zelda. He did, yeah, Zelda. You said Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild. Like, yeah, Zelda. Joe, you know uh, why Joe, he did what he did. There's first, more than remember. just Breath of the you Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, <laughs> those are the last series. two that came out, though. Yeah, but I want to be more specific. Is there a problem with that? 
<laughs> it, was just, it was just hilarious to me. <laughs> so you know, with your breath of the wild vibes thing. I, 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 it's hilarious. <laughs> Like, I'm literally saying, if I would have just said Zelda, you would have said Breath of the Wild anyway. So why are you even doing this right now? Go ahead. No, this is like Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. I'm like, yeah, Zelda. <laughs> Zemus. Uh, so, I am enjoying the game. I think it is a good game. Um, I really feel it is a little underbaked. It doesn't feel as refined as like their previous games, like Neo. Um there's there's some new mechanics and systems in there that I think work well. The bond is kind of an interesting concept. Um I feel like the I agree with Sean that the open world feels a little cluttered. Simple cluttered as well um it i i've seen i don't know how many trees on hillsides that like those roots are floating in the air they're not actually tethered to anything Mm -hmm. and so it's it's details like that that i'm going either the game they needed to keep in the oven longer or they just kind of put it together because they're just that unused to open world that I think they would have been better served with a more linear experience. Because I the main reason I, I picked up the game is Cadre was getting it and I heard there was multiplayer. And yeah, multiplayer they kind of Yeah, they clunked the multiplayer. They, they, they definitely tried something different than they've done in the past. Something where it's supposed to make this game unique and more of a single player it, they tried to make it more of a single player um, game than they did uh, push on the multiplayer for it because the multiplayer is is confined to a handful of missions, especially in the early game. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of takes it kind of takes you needing to explore, you needing to do all the extra stuff, the side stuff, and you needing to push the story along on your own to be able to do anything. Once you've done it, you can go back and like help somebody, but it's it's a bit on the difficult side to do it with people following along the same routes. Agreed. From what I played in the game. Yeah. Uh, you have any other inputs you want to add to that, though, Kadra? About the game? Um, I think overall, I, I like what they're doing. I like that, you know, Team Ninja, Team Ninja has already, they've already gotten their money. They've already established themselves as one of the one of the better like soul studios, in my opinion. So for them to take this chance and kind of venture out into something that's different from what their normal is, I respect it. And I hope they take it in stride, but I hope they can understand that they, there might be some um, some negative, like a, a bit of negative backlash, at least to the especially the funding of this game. It's not going to hit the way the other games does or other games have. But I think it's it has its own unique approach. And I think people are gonna like that. Yeah. I th- I think that this could be like they can build off this foundation to make it better, you know. Mm. Not not everybody can dive into open world games and like be at a in a more polished state than uh most Yeah, I mean Nintendo couldn't even do it with Breath of the Wild, so Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that there's 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 some truth to that i won't deny it but i will say that i felt like they 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 did it better (laughs) but um christian you already said he already said his piece in of the of ronin right Mm -hmm. okay all right so overall magico are you still considering it though yeah. Okay. I, didn't. I guess I haven't watched any gameplay of it. But I normally like those type of games. Yeah. They did their. Uh, they did you know bring back their normal um, or the way they did the uh, stance system, <clears throat> and I actually, the stance system is is unique in itself. There's not a whole lot of games that do shit like that and do it well. They always do it well, in my opinion. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, I uh, personally am still trying to figure it out, but um, I am interested in it. 
Um, next topic. We got. Well, there's not really a point in me saying this portion, but basically, Stellar Blade, uh, their demo was apparently uh, available at one point accidentally on the PlayStation Network, and they had to like remove it as soon as possible. But some people got to the demo, um, so they were able to play it early and really and like showcase some of the information the demo releases literally tomorrow we're currently streaming this the 28th of march and it comes out the 29th so uh but this information was revealed like a while back um but yeah demo releases tomorrow and uh, a lot of people are really interested in it uh zemus was giving us actually some extra information that it it's gonna play less like a bayonetta and more like a Sekiro or god of war uh does that do anything for you cadre i didn't play bayonetta and you know joe's the god of war guy yeah. but you did play Sekiro. I, I did and as joe will never let me forget i never finished I uh, guy beat the first boss and then just stopped. Yeah, I didn't finish it either. I got pretty and far, will but never let me live that one down. Yeah. When I heard that news that it was that the parry and stuff would be more Sekiro esque as far as timing, I like that style. I'm not. Gonna I'm like, that. yeah, that was good. Like it's yes. just that game at the time. I want to say the game was was difficult enough for me to not want to deal with it. But I feel like if I actually sat down and did it, it would have been fine. It's just I can't quite give a reason why other than the fact that it was it was mighty difficult, especially learning a whole new like pairing system. Outside of that, there was definitely some other some other pieces involved in me not playing. That was definitely one of them. It's, it's system was was new enough and intricate enough to fuck me up. Mm. That a uh, big adjustment period. I think you would I think if you you were like more like honed into it you probably would have uh, finished it um a lot sooner. Um I feel like if it me, ends up me being it was a like a uh, black myth the monkey. Jeez. Black myth we'll call him, baby. No! No! That Solid. monkey fucked uh, a lot of people that headless the headless ape fucked a lot of people's runs in a lot of people's dreams. Yeah, but um, a lot of dreams. I I will say I I'm curious to how deep that it actually is. Um, I hope it's not too deep, like Sekiro. But I know that's like, going against what Magic would want. Uh, I don't know. Like and and Stella Blade, it really doesn't see. Just looking at the gameplay, it I didn't really see that aspect of it being more Sekiro like. Like I saw like the counters and stuff, but I don't know. I mean, the demo literally comes out tomorrow, so I guess when I play it on stream, we'll all find out uh, if it actually is like to that level. Uh, but looking at it, it, seemed a little more forgiving. Maybe it comes comes down to the difficulty level you play on. I don't know. Uh, Amazing Christian man. You sound very far away, but um, Stellar Blade, uh, you, you gonna try out the demo? Yeah, I'll probably it's, it's a little far. It's a real deal. Uh, uh, yeah, I could try. Robert, um, yes. I mean, are you interested but, in the game? Absolutely, no. I'm interested, but I don't like my thing about them. My thing about demos is I don't like playing it too close to the release date because i'm just like nope nope i don't care I, I i don't want it too late i want the real deal i can I'll wait for the real deal i can understand that um especially if the game doesn't give you rewards like resident evil 7 yeah. actually gave you rewards for playing the demo and, and eight and uh seven Re final fantasy 7 funny enough uh did the same thing so like there was some uh extra reasons to actually playing those demos but um this is far away enough in my opinion that i don't mind playing the demo it's literally i think they said uh your dem the progress actually does save as well 
Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Like, I can like carry the de the demo data over to the full game. Although, I guess in that aspect, it probably would be better for cr you, Christian, to wait and uh, play closer to the date, the demo, I guess, and then you could just like continue forward or do what you said. Wait for the game to actually come out. But um, yeah. Stellar Blade demo out tomorrow. If y'all are interested in playing it, it'll be there on this PlayStation Store. Check it out. Um, not many of y'all would care about this, but for me, as an avid fan of some of their content, Rooster Teeth has shut down now after 21 years. Uh. Mm -hmm. I am hurt because this is, has to deal with Warner Bros doing this shit and uh, obviously this puts Ruby in a critical condition because it's pretty much in their hands to like pass Ruby off to some other company to uh, take it over and uh, this also besides just talking about shows that I like this is just bad in general because of the layoffs. Like 150 full-time employees just thrown off the brick. Like it sucks when shit like this happens. There's been a lot of layoffs happening with different companies, not just here, but um, in all companies. And it's been uh, really, really trash to see this shit happen. Um, so gotta um, pump those quarter one uh income reports pretty much like a lot of people are are hurting from it though um i've taken to the the internet to speak on it um that's pretty much all i really wanted to put out there um it's shutting down and it really sucks uh any input uh magic uh, I guess nah, like you pretty much hit, said it. Uh, Ruby was the only thing from Rooster Teeth, other than like Death Battle, but I don't even think Rooster Teeth does Death Battle anymore. I think Death Battle became its own thing. Yeah, but, they did. So, they did Red and Blue and Gen Lock and a couple of other things I, I don't think you were really interested in. Yeah, like I would think, I would think, uh, Warner Brothers would like to continue the Ruby things just. They actually did mix them with uh, Justice League and you know DC Comics and things like that. Normally, when uh, Warner Brothers does that, they normally just straight up buy that property, like how uh, the Ninja Turtles are just straight WB, and they're just they like, hey, we're with, we're we be with Batman sometimes now. So hopefully that'll happen with Ruby. Um, It'll get the budget it deserves for its anime and things. Like the Ice Queendom looked really good. It was really, I thought it was really well done. Uh, Sean's the bigger Ruby fan, so you can he can tell you how he felt about the uh, Ice Queendom. Yeah, I thought it was. I, I thought they, it was pretty um, cool how they did it, and it was a nice thing that they did to help bring people up to date with uh, with the series. If you didn't want to go back and look at the choppy. Uh, startup of the series um, from Omni, rest in peace. Uh, it, wait, let me make sure I'm, I'm saying the name right. I don't want to disrespect the man. Monty Ohm. Monty. I'm pretty sure was his name. Monty Ohm, yeah. He was the uh, animator and creator of uh, Ruby. And he also has made De Dead Fantasy to uh, a little small series on the internet before he even partnered up with Rooster Teeth. So, yeah. I'd like to see the series finish. I've feel like it would, it de it deserves to finish with how literally close it was to actually being at the end there's literally only one more season left so like it, it would really suck they even had to shorten up the final season of uh i mean the last season that they came out with um it was a lot shorter than uh past seasons but the animation and budget i'm still having the others actually like go through ruby so they can like see the growth of how much better it gets each like season um only joe has like the most of uh, the furthest uh look on that to um 
like agree that it is getting better for the most part um but i think the others can agree that they saw like a little a few changes but they're uh, much more gr grander um the further you go in so yeah i wanted to just speak on that uh warner bros really acting up a lot and uh all all best wishes to the people working at rooster teeth i hope that uh you can get yourself out of this uh bind um next topic is toys for bob is working on a new game uh the newly independent game studios toys for bob which announced last month that it was split from microsoft owned activision has a, entered an agreement with xbox for a new game according to windows central the deal was reportedly mentioned during a recent town hall meeting toys for bob developed 2018's spirals reunited trilogy which is a really good uh remake of uh the game well not remake uh what would you, reboot what remaster. would you call it remaster yeah um very high quality i i really enjoyed what they did with that and of course with uh the uh what do you call it crash bandicoot what was it called again joe do you remember the insane trilogy the insane trilogy yeah um they also um were behind crash bandicoot 4 which i thought was a really great uh continuation for the crash bandicoot series so yeah um how do y'all feel like then y'all think uh you'd be interested in trying out the toys for bob toys for bob's uh new game we gotta see what the game is yeah i can't i uh, can't commit to anything like that yeah i'm i'm not a I'm not into the games like Spyro anymore, so I'm saying I am, but it but if the mascot doesn't speak to me, like yeah. it's like oh it's a it's a, it's a job talking chipmunk, like I don't I don't want to play that. <laughs> oh, conquer. <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> did you ever play Conquer Bad for a day, Joe? No, oh, and I don't. No, I did not. What? Oh man! You of all people should have played that game. Yeah, that game would have speak to you like highly, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, there's no real details yet on what the game will, would be. I just hope that. Look, I like what Toys for Bob did recently with most of their games. I don't know much about the whole uh, online game they had. Uh, I think it was uh, it was similar to Crash Bash. Uh, forgot the name of that game but they made like some type of online battle game with the crash bandicoot characters i heard it didn't really do that well though um but i just don't want toys for bob to go like the skylanders route because they ah man they they fucked up spyro so bad in that game <laughs> and that game was honestly like really trash to me i don't I don't know how it survived as long as it did. The kids were, must have really taken to it for a decent while, but uh, the f I think as each game came out, it just slowly depleted. So yeah, but hope that it's an interesting game, whatever they make for Xbox. I also heard that there, um, there's a there's a rumor going around that they are working on uh, another Spyro game. Basically, it's Spyro uh, Four be a continuation from where the trilogy left off so yeah could be interesting next topic i'll make this one fast uh prince of persia lost crowns roadmap will add a speed run mode a boss attack and a new dlc uh i don't think anyone here has like really even looked at the game but uh i as someone who's actually played it i really do enjoy lost crown uh i think it it's like the the better games of ubisoft as of recent and uh i think that uh i will definitely try to check out this dlc for sure because um i haven't finished the game yet i'm close to the end 
there's been so many games i've been trying to play so it makes it hard but i i really do enjoy like the different abilities and moves that they have and i would even mind trying to do a speed run of this game i think that'd be a fun thing to actually do that'd be the first game i ever speed run on uh twitch if i ever did it so yeah if you're interested uh stay tuned because the roadmap is looking pretty good for prince of persia and hopefully it can cut the slack on what ubisoft has been doing with their uh quadruple a games you know yeah god to, to self-proclaim a quadruple a game is still insane. it is it really is it, it was a quadruple it was actually a 12 a game because it was a quadruple triple a <laughs> so you have multiply it right or, or is it addition it's seven seven days I, I, go to your corner i think they ah. agree with you seems <laughs> for sure uh next topic ps5 pro specs leaked online uh That's all. i didn't actually check the specs though uh uh the spec list first emerged via youtube more law is dead don't know who that is before insider gaming claimed they were real and the subsequent insider gaming article added further detail ign understands leak specifics are real and emerged with, from sony interactive entertainment's developer network sony has to comment the headline improvements here are the CPU, which is said to be identical to the standard PS5 CPU, but with high CPU frequency mode, which amounts to a 10% increase in uh, how if the gig to the 3.85 gigahertz. Like they just enabled overclocking. That's what it, that's what I was thinking too, Zemus. Um, because hey, they did that for the same GPU. shit, but we allowed you to to use it better. And uh. Like the, it also offers like uh, 10 port 28 teraflops. Oh wait, sorry. Um, the original PlayStation 5 had 10 port 28 teraflops. This one will have even more space, uh, 33.5 teraflops. Um, however, a direct PS5 to PS5 Pro comparison will work out around 10 point 28 versus 16. 17 teraflops so overall i guess when you finish like adding the whole system update and stuff you're going to be sitting at like 17 instead of you know what the 10, the 10. so i don't know man I, it doesn't seem really yeah, it doesn't it's, it's one of those much. scenarios where like if my ps5 messed up maybe i would uh, maybe i'd go ahead and get it but like it's not that huge of a difference that you're getting here and i guess i shouldn't be too surprised with it because i think this talks about ps6 that, the idea of oh no it's basically the same chip we just we're gonna allow you to do use it a little bit better that's that seems kind of dirty it's a little janky yeah 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 like Basically, it wouldn't even allow, like, there's were reports about Grand Theft Auto 6. Um, actually, um, as it stands, they're only going to be able to run it, according to developers, they're saying that it's only going to be able to run at 30 frames. Um, Damn. And even with this upgrade for the PlayStation 5, there's still no talk of uh, it improving GTA 6's um, frame data. So, yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> Why is it so difficult to bring this thing up to a standard performance? What is it? What is it about this game that they're going so hard on that they drop frame rating? Did you see them ass jiggles, man? Man, <laughs> jiggle physics did this to you. You need to stop. <laughs> you need to find a new new thing to do. That's crazy. Because I've man. seen jiggle physics that work wonders on some three bit. But I know damn well you got something better than that. Nah, man. It's, but have you it's, had it's the, the amount of the boobs and the ass simultaneously. It's the amount of it. <laughs> the amount. Yes, yeah, it, it's a it's a six point jiggle. Yeah. You want to see like fit? You know, like 20, 20 asses jiggling on the beach. You know, we got you. Don't worry about the frame rate. Just worry about the ass. <laughs> but 
with him. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot to have the CPU doing. Come out of nowhere and blow my game up. All right, but uh, yeah, PS. That's the PS5 Pro uh, current leaks, and um, yeah, not really impressed. Uh, we'll see if anything changes by the time they actually decide to release it, or even give us a date. Um, moving on to the next topic, I don't know if I'm the only one who has info on this. Maybe Joe, you took a look yourself. But Fatal Fury City of Wolves was uh, announced. Uh, oh man, based, I love uh, uh, nah. Yeah, Sorry. they had an announcement trailer, official announcement trailer. Uh, Fatal Fury is like SNK's big fighting game next to King of Fighters. It follows. The main character is Rock Howard. It used to be Terry, and then Rock. It's with Rock. It's the story with Rock and Geese and everybody like that in the in the city. That's where they originally come from. Where King of Fighters is more of a uh, a join up game where different people from different games come together. So, Fatal Fury coming back after a very long time. It's, it's exciting news for fans of the series. Uh. It's, it had, like I said, it had an announcement trailer, so it showed a little bit of gameplay, but it wasn't a lot. So, you know, cautiously optimistic. Thank you for taking over, Joe, because I, I had to answer something from my father. But, um, <laughs> yeah, um, what about the rep system? You have anything to say about that? Like, I think it, lo- I think it looks pretty uh, interesting how it works. Uh, I have nothing to say about it because I don't know how it works until getting hands on and see it like in real match stuff. Uh, basically, it seems to be from what I gathered in uh, a video is that it ex- allows you to extend a combo or basically power up a move to do more uh, damage. But uh, there is like a give or take with it. I think like there's like some type of cool down that can like uh like I, like I saw the trailer i seen like the like made it look like ex moves or combo extensions but i don't yeah. know the full ins and out of it true like true. how drastically different will it make the character i don't know that yet um how smooth will it transition and all of that true um any of the characters caught your eye in terms of their like art style I, d- I just told you they only had they, they didn't show that much oh you didn't see the other tra- trailer showing like more ca- more of the characters i mean it's the, it's the same pretty much okay no, i didn't see the other trailer i also with the announcement trailer what about I mean, the new girl pe- preacher she's she should be in the trailer that i po- posted on, on her uh, the girl with the glasses hold on find it here because i i personally like the uh, fan duel every night is a while oh my god hey. <laughs> that was wild <laughs> almost died <laughs> with with fan duel you say that fan duel almost killed me crazy was, was that our was that our sponsorship right there is that it is that all we needed Oh man, that's the first sponsor we get. Crazy, Fandle. insane. Could be. It's but y'all don't. But y'all wouldn't even know how to explain how to bet and what to bet. I know a little sure. bit because um, Ronnie has uh, told me a lot about it. So, like, I can tell you, Tizoc is not new. I was talking um, about preacher. Preacher, I'm not sure. I'm, like I guess I don't know. I don't know as much about Fatal Fury as the other things. Mm. But nah, like I'm wa- I'm waiting. Okay, fair enough. We don't have to dive too deep into it, and I'm sure Zemis and uh, Kadre aren't don't really have much to add towards it. Yeah, sports ball. Yeah, yeah like, 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 it's like, not yeah. even sports ball. What the? <laughs> it looks like standard SNK, like SNK style gameplay. I will say I like the comic book like art style reminds me of Street Fighter uh, 4 
a bit. Oh, you know, a little bit, of, even like a little bit of Marvel versus Capcom in there. Three. Um, Christian, are, did you look at it? Okay, good talk. All right, so next topic. We have. Uh oh! Wow, this is all right. So we're gonna skip this until Christian gets back. Uh. Shit. Uh, how about uh Marvel <laughs> Rivals? Did did any, did any of y'all take a look at that? Nope. Shit. What is that? Uh, it's basically people are calling it the Overwatch Killer. I don't know why people always got to put killer to something. <laughs> On top of that, like Overwatch wasn't really all that great to begin with. To need to be killed. Yeah. Um, I. I mean, it look it looks fine. I I don't know. Yeah, I've been I've been doing a little uh, research on uh, the people that are developing that game, and uh, NetEase I've heard are really really uh, horrendous with their microtransactions. So yes. I'm not uh, too happy about that. Uh, that game's but, gonna have microtransactions without a shadow of a doubt. Oh yeah, I was. I, it's not that I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, look at Overwatch. But at the end of the day, I I just I guess I'm gonna have to just see how I enjoy the gameplay. It's a six v six fighter. Um, there's destructible environments in it, and it looks like there's like a nice ver enough variety of how characters um, play to keep things interesting for the most part but um if i'm going off of this think thinking in the same vein of overwatch i'll have to like uh, see how much it actually captivates me because at the end of the day i'd never really enjoyed overwatch unless i was playing with a good team <laughs> what is that most mobas anyway yeah i guess i guess that's fair i mean like you you literally played smite with me right I, I I feel like you wanted me to attack you there, and I'll have no part of it. <laughs> but um, they seem to be putting a lot of uh, the X Men in there too, which I think is gonna definitely push sales a lot more for the game because a lot of people love the X Men. So um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I think I spoke for everybody in that aspect, so I guess we can move on to the next topic. Uh. Christian man, are you there? You, s I saw your thing move, but I didn't really hear you. Yeah. Still sound far away. Uh, uh you want to talk about this Marvel animations, X Men ninety seven? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. Well, how do you like it so far? Um. I love it. Um, I was a little skeptical about it because, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like sometimes when, uh, uh, not even not not so much just Marvel, just like companies in general, where they try to go based off, off nostalgia that this is gonna be successful, they don't really capitalize like that. And I think that's where this this show is so unique because not only it is just as good as the original show but it still retains that feel you know what i'm saying that the original show um that w what made the original show so freaking cool um i definitely appreciate the um the story arcs they're going with um i think uh the, the episode that just passed i think i have that comic book but i gotta look for it um let's see um that that's really it like i really i definitely and you know cyclops you know i i really think marvel sat down and played marvel vs capcom 2 <laughs> and was like you know what cyclops cool in this game let's make him cool again and that's is exactly cyclops considered an omega level mutant 
I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it's a hell no. Uh, nah, no, Cyclops. It it's changed over the years. Yes, they hold Cyclops Cyclops out so much. So because Havoc was an Omega level, wasn't it? Who? Havoc. Yeah, Havoc and Cyclops are Omega level. So they are Omega level, both of them. Yeah, both of them. Okay. Would you say? Uh... Would you say is that in this? I don't think Cy- Cyclops or Mecha level. I thought he was uh I think he can be. Okay. Alpha level. I don't, I don't know. No. I mean look, I I'm not gonna He's sit changed here, a lot. I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say that I've watched like all of uh the old X Men um series. Uh, I've I've kinda just been in and out with it. So I'm not like up to date with all that information. But I will say that they definitely did betray cyclops in a much better light in this um show um i felt like he was he looked like he was very well experienced in how he handles everything and uh his skill is like on display like from the very beginning he he's like the thing that grabbed me the most when i watched the first episode and that was only like five minutes in and then like everything just came together feel like a team leader in this one exactly like Like he's a leader for a reason exactly yeah, whereas in the original one i th- i thought he was he's the leader but it's like everybody's like i, I guess we have to listen to him yeah yeah come on guys do what i tell you like okay like back in the day i was looking at wolverine like the whole time and like i find myself mm-hmm. looking more at everybody now well in mm-hmm. x-men evolution that's because he was either a wolverine or a gambit guy that's because wolverine was well, Wolverine that was is just older than everybody. So, mm-hmm. like in X Men Evolution, that was when they had most of the X Men be teenagers, and obviously Logan's a grown ass man. People who are always grown ass uh, adults in like X Men when they t- retell the stories is Wolverine, Storm's normally an adult, uh, and Beast is normally an adult. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyone else? They fluctuate, but sometimes they're adults like Cyclops, or sometimes they're teenagers. So I'm a Gambit man myself. Favorite yeah. mutant, one thousand percent. Gambit. Well, Gambit is still cool in this. Um, but uh, I would definitely he's recommend. Not. He's not. Yeah. No, he's not. Okay. Amazing Christian man feels he is not in this. I mean, um, I mean, I, obviously, I'm, I'm just fucking around, but um, I mean, Gambit's just Gambit in this one. I mean, but I've, but like uh, Kajak Banner said, I've always been a Gambit guy. What's that mean, Kobe Bryant? I, I, th- I think that he's had a couple of cool moments in this. It, of course, he didn't shine as much as um some of the others, but like. You know, obviously that's because like some characters like stepped up even more. So now it's kind of like I'm looking yeah. at everybody in the same vein. Yeah. Like, literally going back to Cyclops. Cyclops was like mm-hmm. literally the one that was just like, man, like this man getting fucked up constantly. <laughs> and now yeah. like I'm seeing him in this, I'm like, okay, like he he really came into his own. Like he, he's doing mm-hmm. the shit. But yeah, behold. Um, okay. So, yeah. To sum up, though, because I think only me and Christian Man are the only ones who actually watched like the episodes so far. Um, I would suggest for anyone who has, uh, I think yeah, I think it's only on Disney Plus, right? Yeah. If you or you know whatever service, I ain't gonna um, point out any other services, but you can find them out there. Take a look at the. Um, show you'll enjoy it i think you really Y'all know would. where to go um avatar the last airbender netflix series why did i say mm. that way series um <laughs> okay so this has a, a very mixed demographic um it's slightly leaning more on the negative side as but if i'm giving my own opinion real quick I think that the show is fine. I think it d- still does need like some work in a couple of areas. Uh, for me, th- this might be 
on the smaller side for people but uh the comedy i think it's not as much comedy as i would like for uh avatar the last airbender they kind of try to make a little things a little too uh serious and i'm not saying that there aren't serious moments in avatar the last airbender but they definitely felt like um in this season that they held on to it a little for a little bit too long and it's pacing for that is like kind of draining in my opinion um choreography for some fights are good i'd say the best ones are literally with ang and um zuko but uh they also change a lot of story aspects that kind of suck that they did they're, they're rushing it they're basically rushing it that's that's why i feel like it's the main issue that people have they're not spending enough time like letting people appreciate the journey and rather they're trying to get there to the destination um a lot sooner than they need to and with that crunching that they're doing it's kind of messing with how people see the story and can sometimes even leave like some holes in like what's going on um if y'all don't mind me saying this by the end of the series by the end of season one he didn't even learn water better Like he he got to the place where he's supposed to and stuff, but he didn't even learn it. Now there is like some things there that you can like see what they're kind of trying to do with that. But honestly, I felt like in a in the first book, water. You would have him learn water, so yeah. But overall, I think the CGI and uh, the locations were done re really well. Um. And I'm hoping that it improves for the next season. I, I'm optimistic for the second season. I just think that they got to fix a couple more things. Uh, amazing, Christian Man. Um, so you basically said everything that I was thinking. Um, uh, I, I only, I really, I actually enjoyed it. Um, the, C, the CGI is flawless. Um, for mm, a Netflix flawless. show. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, for a Netflix show, it's flawless. Um, the the actors. The fuck does that even mean? I mean, Netflix isn't exactly known for busting out high quality. So right. actually, I would say opposite as far as budget. Netflix shows normally got that crazy budget. So yeah. Um. So in terms of like adaptations, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's. Uh, I would like definitely say add this on though. It's a thousand percent better than the mo the the movie that came out way years ago. That movie was at, uh the movie was shit. What I movie? even have to see it to know it. What movie? movie? Shit. Um um Last Airbender. Oh, you're talking about the oh. M M Shyamalan? Yeah, M Shalon, uh, yeah. I would M definitely say that. Uh, he don't yeah. deserve to have his name said right by me. Oh damn! <laughs> I mean, he made he did more movies than just that show. I mean, and then that, uh, like, come on, man. <laughs> what you gonna give him props to? But yeah, he, he made signs. <laughs> right. Signs was cool. good. Signs was good. Cool too. Glass was awesome. Glass. Oh, I didn't know he did glass. Yeah. Yeah. Unbreakable. Yeah. Unbreakable. Glass split. Was, glass. The was cool. You know. The Sixth Sense. Glass was ass yeah. to me. The Sixth Sense, like I said. When Bruce Willis was dead at the end of The Sixth Sense, I jizzed in my pants. It's unbreakable. Split. Uh. Look. Natural uh, Museum 2. Did you like Stuart Little? <laughs> Stuart Little was just okay. It wasn't Cause he did Because he did Stuart Little too. I wanted to pump that mouth so bad. Now, don't get me wrong. He also has just a, just like I just the, like the good movies that I've said. He also has a extensive list of shit movies, like like the Last Airbender, like After Earth with Will Smith and his son. You know what's funny? Oh, yeah. Old that movie I thought was the great. Which one? Uh, The Village. I'm pretty sure it was called Old. The Village was. Like the plot twist was terrible. 
It was. It was interesting. It was. I wouldn't say it was terrible. It was um, guessable. Like it wasn't really a twist. It wasn't really predictable. Thank you for the love of God. And as for, I'm pretty sure it was old. Whatever one it was, where like he trapped the people on the uh, on the beach that ex- that you age like super rapidly. And the twist for that was that oh, well, we're gonna trap these people with a whole bunch of different diseases. We're gonna time to figure out how to cure these diseases. Like nigga, what? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like Lady in the Water. <laughs> You're laughing, but I'm I don't, saying <laughs> I don't even know why that laugh happened. <laughs> I didn't, but you know, all right, to, to each their own. But you know, I I find myself really not liking a lot of the films that he he's done. So, I, and, and he's definitely on. I'm sorry, go ahead, sorry. He's definitely I'm on my sorry. spite list with messing with Avatar also. I won't deny that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Christian. What, what do you want to say, bro? Go ahead. It was just funny because every time I would see that damn, that dumbass uh, commercial for that movie, you just hear that little girl just whisper, <laughs> like, that. <laughs> why the fuck what? are you whispering? Yes. I used to laugh at that commercial a lot. Like, what? Why? Why? Why are you whispering? <laughs> but, uh, uh, okay. But, <laughs> whispering. Oh. <sighs> All right. Um, let's move on ahead. Cause I mean, do you? Do y'all have any final inputs of uh, Last Airbender Netflix? Nope. No. Nah. Mm. Are, y'all, are you gonna wait till like the next season to see if it's any good to, to give it actually a try? Even get another season. I think they they're still they're season. greenlit for another season. They're greenlit for a they, season. They, two they may have been contacted like, hey, do season two and three, but depending on how this goes, it may not be. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait it out. That's yeah. yeah that's fair. They may also pull a Witcher they, and hey, they, we're yeah, Cumber and oh, uh, you get the fuck out. You get the fuck out. Here's yeah, because they kind of hold themselves with the Witcher too, because that would have been a really good one. To keep going, and they kind of like, eh, no. Yeah. Mm, true. You know would have been, you know would have been uh, kind of funny, Sean. What? If, if M. Sean <laughs> directed <laughs> They bring him in to to direct the second season. Yeah. Ooh, I, look, I, uh, look, it's three dimensional. We fighting. <laughs> we fighting if that happens. You said what? We fighting if that happens. <laughs> Yeah. You and Sean are fighting if that happens. No, no, no I, I'm fighting alone. That this is a personal vendetta. No, no, I'm saying you're fighting Christian. I was uh, saying, you? Because he's the one who put that. Because he's the one who put that in the air. I can't. I wouldn't be able to waste the energy. I, I'd put it all on uh, M. Shaman. Huh? How you just said you you said you was gonna fight, and now because you said you gotta fight Christian, you because I, stand cause on I met M. Shemla. You you ain't gonna fight M. Night Shaman. Like the closest person would be to fight Christian because he put it in the air. Well, what, what you, you think you I won't find a way? You gonna, gonna turn think I, yes, I, I, yes, I think you won't find a way, Sean. I think you will not find a way to go fight M. Night Shyamalan. 1,000%. <laughs> Alright, let's put that down in the notes. <laughs> Sean, you Remember that you time? The notes is premeditated. You're going to jail. Sean kept putting Jamie Foxx playing Spawn in the air so bad, so much, that this nigga literally is going to play Spawn. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that anymore, actually, because of his health condition. But yeah, um, I did do that. Yeah. Yes. What's wrong with Jamie Foxx? He, he epileptic? I, I don't. I don't know. They, they're not giving enough information on it. He, he seems like he's getting better, but like I don't know if he he's gonna be good in time for them for the time they want to like film Spawn. But that's a whole nother topic. Um. Let's got let's dive into these last ones. Um Shannon Sharp with his turtle outfit. Uh Shannon Sharp. He he uh apparently made more money with that Cat Williams interview than his whole football career. Damn. That's an estimate of oh, fifteen wow. million. So I uh, any input on that? Shannon Sharp's the man. 
he's blowing up man. he's yeah. blowing up i'm happy for him i'm a big fan of him always have been since he's been on undisputed and everything he was a great football player he was a he was a shit talker extraordinaire uh shut up zemus uh you're out here talking about sharpie pens we're talking about a, a grown black man who's doing successful you are not gonna talk about no goddamn <laughs> You called yeah, me. and you tried to talk about a sharpie pen. That's fucked up. Wow. That's, that's, that's where they get the name Sharpie. That's wild. Kidding shit, right? That is <laughs> damn. Damn. Z- damn. Damn. Cancel. <laughs> Cancel him. <laughs> you don't. You don't really know when to stop, huh? You just gonna keep going. Damn. 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 Sh- <laughs> Shannon Sharp. This is a safe place. <laughs> but yeah, nah. But but like I said, big but, man always have been. Even yeah. when he was a football player, you no. Know? Yeah, I'm happy. People, I'm happy for him. People are gonna roast him, you know. Obviously, and the nigga old. He, he yeah. he's old with bad hips. So yeah, he's going. Yeah. And he's a big motherfucker, but he's wearing I, tight shit. So there was some. There was a. a it's gonna look wild. I think there was a, a interview with him not too long ago, and like. uh the guy that was interviewing was him was saying like you gotta stop wearing like the tight pants and stuff man it was offset oh it was offset and, was like, and then uh shannon sharp was like nah man i'm not gonna let nobody change me i'm gonna do what i do and stuff and all that so you know he knows maybe uh maybe you should <laughs> you don't care man he gonna, he's gonna do what he wants to do obviously but you know still you know oh, good for fun. him you know that, that's a wild um thing to find out though that uh cat williams basically did that for him <laughs> like the, i don't think that's something that you could regularly like have something happen in that interview um in general i don't think you understand like how oh let me check the views on it right now because I, I i don't I don't have the like knowledge of like obviously I like looked a little bit into it, but I don't have like the knowledge of what an average football player makes. But this is again, this is from this is not today's time. He was from back in the day. It's way more money now than it used to be. Hmm. But yeah, that has it got sixty three million views in crazy. two months. Damn, absolutely crazy. And it's not even like it's a short video. It's a two hour and 46 minute video and it has 63 billion views. Man. Good shit. Good shit, <laughs> Shannon. Congrats. Um, I wanted to throw two things out there. Well, actually, no. I'll wait till after I do this um, last topic right here. Um, So we're going to move on. But what did anyone else have anything to say about the shannon sharp uh thing no okay no. all right um so apple ju- just um um showcased their uh their vision pro which is basically the vr helmet for apple and uh it's going for a thousand I believe. Um, you are at, wrong. I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at right now. Apple Vision Pro says three thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars. Yeah, okay, dude. yeah, it's a lot more. That is. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hey. Yeah, and it shows it right here. Yeah, I had to get down to it. Um, that is three times more. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh it's been showcased i i looked at a couple of videos of it of in action and uh it it definitely does look in, impressive i think it's it is doing a few things that other vr helmets haven't done yet um it has not uh to me is it almost gives like an ar experience to the to the location you're in even though it's vr technology um because of the whole like there's like sequences where you can do where you can like 
bring up little panels and like you can like set it up on your desk and then like you can like walk away and like it'll still be on the desk or you can like put a calendar on the wall you can like type stuff out and call me when we get to shangri-la frontiers levels until we're there don't talk to me i think this is no this it's is not like a, no a, a no charging three grand i want shangri-la frontiers if it's like 50 bucks then we can talk I don't think a VR helmet will ever be 50 bucks. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's wild. If, if it's not, like, give me glasses, they're 50 bucks. <laughs> You'd be hard pressed to find some regular glasses that are 50 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you won't even have prescription in your glasses. Sometimes <laughs> 50 bucks. Yeah, true, true. I mean,. Did but you, that's also its own problem with like those of us that wear glasses like can't it's an extra hurdle for us too yeah i mean it looks it looks cool i'm i'm not more i'm not that inclined to obviously get it i'm not i wouldn't pay three thousand i don't think i'd pay three thousand for anything other than like i would pay three thousand for shangri-la frontiers i guess if like if we got the VR world where where you can be in the VR world like Shangri La Frontier and Overlord and stuff, yeah, like especially that, Shangri La Frontier. That's that true next level shit. That uh, yeah, like I, 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 I could not blame them for charging three grand at that point. Like I need a bird head, <laughs> bird. Head. <laughs> I need to go fight a wolf that I'm not supposed to fight at all. That's yes, that's my life. Yeah. Like oh, Man, Chris, am I, it, you oh to like am I not supposed to do that? Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. You'd have been one of the first people to die in Sword Art Online. <laughs> See now in Sword Art Online, the whole you die in the game, you die in real life shit. I wouldn't even have played it. You wouldn't have Joe, known. Nick, you wouldn't have known. Like, what? <laughs> oh my bad. I haven't watched Sword Art Online. I didn't know they didn't know. Oh my oh, god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the whole. That's the whole <laughs> you thing. You thought that these niggas like straight up. Hey man, fuck it. I want to kill myself. I no. thought they. Hey. No as soon as they logged in, nigga was like, "You cannot log out." Nah, it was a it was a literal accident, like that happened. But it was not an accident. Well, no, well, yeah, it wasn't it, an accident. It was, it was, it was not planned. The purpose of the consumer. Yeah. So how long has this oh, nigga yeah. been in the game? Then shit. I think they're they're in Sword Art Online at least for the first season for two years. Two years? How the fuck are you not? How the fuck do you not just die in real life? Hospitals. Everybody so, that was all right, game, hold on, hold on. So let me let me synopsis the shit for you, Joe, because this the fact that you haven't seen it really throws throw me off here. Yeah. So a whole bunch of people bought. There's a guy who said, "Hey, I created a Neuralink that allows you to go into the fucking game." Of course, it got popular. Everybody wants to do it. Boom! Whole bunch of people get the game. From that point, people start realizing they can't log out people in the outside world realize oh shit people have died from this people are dying let me let's go ahead and work. they take the people that have been or, affected or by like, it like little timmy's been on in the game for six hours it's time for dinner i'm taking this off of him yeah and it electrocutes him to death wow that is that sounds like that's the other thing is that you, if you that sounds to, like if terrible game, you die, if you try to remove the game if you try to remove it you die Wait. Where's the gaming commission at? Like, what? That's terrible. Who? He, this who was all, it, it, so this was a fail-safe. No, they explained that too. It was a fail-safe program that he embedded in the code. They did not know it was there. He, the the creator of the game, had a double key system that did that. The people, when they when he ran it through all the the proper channels and everything, it got through. So it wasn't like the gaming commission was like, "Hey, man, I want to see you kill some kids." That's crazy. So we'll let this game through. Yeah. Yeah, it was he was so cutting edge that it was just like nobody, God nobody damn. recognized most of what they. Wow, were. I am, I am more glad that I have not watched it. <laughs> what the? <laughs> I'm really surprised you didn't. It was actually like the first season was good, second season was decent, like, third season started getting wild. Like it just never, it just never spoke to me. So that's why I just. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. I mean, and then, the same time. and then after a while, I just didn't watch it out of spite because I know someone put up the Black Swordsman. I'm like, nigga, what? <laughs> like, okay. like, 
this bitch? Like, nah. <sighs> the guts fan <sighs> over here. Yeah, like, nah. Like, <laughs> how about you see guts in real life, not in the game? <laughs> Okay. Honestly, like I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Guts didn't really go through a whole lot of shit. Like, We're gonna kind of just need to suck it up. You know what, Joey? We are in a podcast, <laughs> so I'm being professional. Because I was definitely about to move you to the timeout room. <laughs> I was like, this is it. This is what the timeout room was made for. You had to be put on timeout for saying nonsense. But. <laughs> Straying back to uh, this Apple Vision shit. Um, yeah, none of us are planning on getting this shit. Um, unless they like do like a real price cut, I don't see myself ever wanting to get the state. They don't really have any games that like have good functionality with it yet, even. And plus, I don't really like the limitations that are set with some Apple products. So that already like. We're coming to play with using the vision headset and stuff so oh yes same problem with like facebook on oh well you have to have a facebook account for their yeah. meta quest like, yeah for the meta like, quest oh yeah. and if you get banned for whatever for on a whim of ours you can't ever use your meta quest again like, what yeah oh yes people binary beings animals aliens and whatever else you want to be comment down below who do you ship in Final Fantasy? Aerith Cloud or Tifa Cloud? Or hell, maybe even Barrett Cloud. Maybe Yuffie Cloud. Oh, maybe maybe not know. Yuffie Gro Cloud. <laughs> maybe not. Can, I, can it be Yuffie Barrett? It could be Yuffie Cloud. I so here's the so so let's so here's the question. Huck, Joe, please. For for hold time out, time out. For those who don't know. Cloud was frozen when he was 16. He was frozen when he was 16. So mentally, he's 16. And that's the same age as Yuffie. Oh, so that 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 lends itself to so in Marvel with the blip, are they they de cease to exist temporarily? Are they the age that's on their driver's license, or are they the age? Oh, in the uh, in Marvel, they were specifically the same age they were when they blipped. Right. So they had to like retcon, like, oh no, you have to be, what was it, like twenty two or twenty three to drink alcohol because you're still. I, I guess so. Mm -hmm. okay. So if that's how we're interpreting it, then Cloud would fall under that same logic there now excuse me now either way this is japan logic so it's fine either way in japan true <sighs> but i'll just go ahead yeah. and say right now that i'm i'm a cloud in earth and i'll leave it at that cloud tifa man myself but yeah, feel free to leave comments below in the Please, YouTube video. I would like to know or, what the split is. Or, you know, comment towards the podcast. Uh, I, I think there's a section that you can be. No, it's Cloud and, it's cloud and whoever. It's you and Barrett. Uh, no, it is Cloud and whoever. And, and, uh, and Yuffie is not Barrett's type. I've seen Barrett's type. Yuffie ain't it. What's Barrett's type? I'm gonna wait till Sean sees her. Oh, oh, damn. Okay. Well, um, we're about pretty much done with this. Uh, Amazing Christian has vanished off the face of the earth. Uh, last thing I just wanted to, there's just three last things I wanted to just go ahead and point out as we're finishing up. Man, three last things. They're quick. Uh, One more thing. No, it's just, no, it, no, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It, it's fine as three things. Just that you said three last things. It just sounds weird. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. I have three more things I want to say. Uh, there you go. Dragon Ball D Daima. Uh, it's still coming out. Uh, do we have any uh, plans of like looking at this um, in general? 
Like, are are we still like gonna get this? I was try? always going to watch it, at least with the first episode. Mm-hmm. So that hasn't changed. Is me. this the one where it's like they're kids? Yeah. Or they're like chibi version, not kids. Yeah. So is it that they're kids or they're chibi version? Kids. They've been de-aged. So do they have everyone's okay, been de-aged, no, including, including Goten and, and Trucks? Expanding upon GT rules. Got so do they still have their same? So they have their same knowledge from when they're adults. Yes. Correct. The kids. Correct. Yeah. So they've been chibied. Okay. Uh, I, I That's guess. all the chibi is. Just it's just a, it's a child. It's a child sized version of the of the original form. So was Goku chibi during uh, GT? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I'm gonna leave that to uh, Joey. I don't know what the definition of chibi is. Uh, I, I don't. I, I thought it was just a, a tiny. Uh, art style of the character i thought it was a tiny big head i mean that's kind of this the same way if it's like they uh they still have all the knowledge and everything that they do but they actually but they actually were the age it's not like a actual art style like the age I mean, was well, brought back. It's, it's all an art style for us where that's what i was saying in, in terms of this being an art style it is a cheap art style i thought she <laughs> because i thought she they would still be their same age though like they're like like Trunks literally goes from thirteen to uh, he's two now. I mean that comes into the situation of that's why I asked, do they have the no- their same knowledge? Because mind well, is the same age, but their body is now childlike. Well, Goten and Trunks are they they've regressed to baby form, so like their their brains aren't like actually function at the same level as they were when they were kids but if we're talking well, about like goku and stuff maybe goku's a little more childish but yes they he does um retain his uh his knowledge and information and stuff of what's going on as well as bulma and with that other. same situation then you would believe that trunks and goten can uh, they've retained it as well it's just they can't express it because of how far back they've gone yeah like they might still have the same because if that if they all have this like they still have the same memories same mindset all that good shit it's just their kids now or their kid like then it's like their minds themselves haven't changed it's just the fact that their bodies have I, which I, means that goten and trunks are teenagers trapped in children's bodies or preteens whatever they were i guess that's to the extent of like you know like jobless type of thing that you're you're kind of go- getting at like yeah when, that's, that's what that's what i'm like is that what they're doing but, but the only problem with that in my opinion is just that I guess I'm seeing it as the way you're desc- you're describing it makes me think more along along the lines of uh, Family Guy with Stewie, like Stewie's just you know he's a baby but he like has like full genius aptitude and he can like talk and say that and is not stuff. the same thing. Yeah, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, Chibi. Regardless, yeah, I'm I'm interested in taking a look at Daima, uh, because like I said, I enjoyed the ball, the Dragon Ball series the most. Um, I like the money. Out of all them. I like the money. Um, what about uh Sandland? That was like one of his uh, final projects that he uh, worked on. I watched one episode. I didn't really feel too attached. Okay, I haven't watched the first episode yet, but I, I felt like I should at least give it a, a look. But uh, I, will I mean, t- I will temper I heard my like the first six episodes are just going to be what the movie was, and then the seventh episode will be new stuff. So I think I just I know I'm just saying. So like it might just be better to watch the movie. Yeah. A lot of people apparently were liking it from what I've seen online, um, but. I don't like have any input on what exactly they liked about it. It's like praises were given. Maybe it's just because of his passing, and you know they, you know they're feeling more nostalgic to his writing style. But I don't know. We'll see. What from what I've heard, at the very least, it seems like the most grounded of all the series he's made, which I'm interested to, interested to look at. Um, but yeah. Um, last thing I wanted to actually do was, uh, I don't know if y'all have listened to any albums recently, but, uh, I've 
Yes, all of them have bones. Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been uh, listening to Blue Lips um, from Schoolboy Q. I think uh, it's a really great album. Uh, I've heard a couple of Scooby- Schoolboy Q songs um, from um, Magic and a couple of other people. I, I think even you, Kadra, have played a couple of songs mm-hmm. for me by him. Uh, the only so- song that I like keep mentally stuck in my head is Water off of one of his albums. Um, but this is the first That's time for I've- ugly reasons. But for the most for like uh, the most part, I've listened to this whole album and I have to say I've loved every sing- almost every single track. Like this is like my go to gym playlist for sure. And I only I got hit. That. I I only have um, knowledge of this album because uh, of some other uh, YouTubers that I've you know listened to um, chat about different music and stuff. Uh, I can't name them off the top of my mind, but I will go ahead and say that they they gave me uh, a reason to take a look at the album, and I'm glad I did. Um, any of y'all? Well, well, specifically Cadre and Magic. Have y'all like? Mm. Take t- taking a listen. <laughs> no, honestly, I, I have uh, I have fallen off of the game for so long. The biggest thing, and of course, the biggest news is uh, Kendrick' newest uh, newest diss song towards Drake and J Cole. Uh, J Cole. I, I think this might be getting a little like. Granted, I would love to see some beef between those fa- like fantastic artists. I think that'd be great because I think like especially if it's like not sanctioned beef type situation. Like, there's no hard feelings for it. It's just like, hey man, like I want to be greatest but shit you're gonna have to go through me type situation i think the fact that in the, if that is how this is kendrick took the first shot i'm anxious to see what kind of retaliation j cole's gonna have drake I, man i don't know like when they when he's that's what made me think in the first place is this really about you know drake and big sean or big sean uh metro j. Cole and uh metro booming no no, it's uh, no, not at all. Well, I mean, I, I guess probably. Drake Metro and Metro has put in a lot of work on like producing shit. Future. But I, when I think about Big Three, I don't think Drake. The problem is that I can't really say who I would replace Drake with if it wasn't for a Big Three. So in terms of the rap community, maybe, maybe he is there. But he's I don't definitely. Know he's there. So they've always been grouped together as the Big Three because they're the most successful of this generation. Drake being more successful than both of them, but most people feeling like J. Cole and Kendrick rap better than Drake. But numbers are numbers, the hits are hits. Yeah. I was like, Drake got him. Like, can't hey, nobody take that away. Drake got him for sure. I just if we're talking if we're talking like if we're talking lyrically, he's not uh, he's not up there. Success, yeah. Lyrically he's not up there with the two. Yeah. Like if we're talking um, lyrically, I think I would give it still to uh, Kendrick Lamar, but that's personal. Give it to Cole, honestly. Jake Jermaine. Yeah. Oh, give it to Cole. like Kendrick's great. Ken, like I said, I see hearing this, like hearing Kendrick pop up with this, it was great because it's like he didn't he didn't just come in off some soft shit. He came in swinging. Hmm. I don't know, man. But I don't think Drake's going to respond because Drake's a rapper singer, so he doesn't have to. Like him losing a rap battle doesn't affect his. Plus, most of Drake's uh, fan base don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. sure. Plus, I think this well, man is like just a... trying to take that break, long ass break that he said. I think he's going to take like a two year break. Who's going to take a one year break? One year break. Oh, Drake. Drake? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, so oh, so Kendrick waited till Drake said he's gonna take a one year break to then finally <laughs> say some shit. So now Drake like, God damn it! Now I can't take a fucking break. It's like, this nigga said, man, fuck the big three, nigga. It's just big me. Like, God, now I gotta come out of retirement. <laughs> but see, but here's the thing, though. That was a hard line until you check the numbers, and the numbers say, nigga, if it's if it's if it ain't no big three. You ain't it. If it's a big, if it ain't no big three, just big you. You don't even sell more than fucking. Uh, who the fuck am I thinking of? Mariah Carey. I'm Mariah <laughs> Carey, but shit. <laughs> but you don't sell. But you don't sell more than them two, cause nigga, you only rap like every six years. Exactly. 
like you don't put out a you don't put out enough for it to be considered like the what you put out is hard like what you put out what kendrick has put out has been hard don't get me wrong and it's been consistently pretty back to back on he hasn't really had flops but like you say he doesn't do enough to keep his name up there people just know of him but if you you ask me what's the last thing what's the last thing that kendrick did that was new that you really fucked with this that this is the only thing that's going to come up right now because mm. yeah, the last because the last song that I, that i really played that had uh kendrick lamar on it wasn't even for kendrick lamar it was for kodak kodak black true yeah, yeah kodak black okay another isn't, honestly good artist too isn't j cole coming out with an album this year it's coming out with two from what yeah, i because i remember in the the album he for all the dogs uh extension or whatever the heck it was called um he's he was like pointing out that that album was coming out maybe he said it earlier than that even but still i wasn't sure so maybe we'll hear some stuff in there he had already had that planned up before all the the shit with kendrick and everything so yeah i think that might be why kendrick waited till now to set shit up it's like okay cole's coming out with some shit let me hit back first i mean it just means that he's already thinking about doing something he was like it kind of like Joe said, just comes back to it though. Like Kendrick just does EPs. Like you don't really do too much. He does little things every once in a while. You don't really think about. Oh my god, that's a troll. Okay. <laughs> don't wait. You're talking about in the game. <laughs> I mean, it actually, it works both. It works both ways. I'm sorry, but yeah, there is definitely a troll here. Troll in the dungeon. Okay. Well, I think that wraps it up. Unless y'all had anything extra y'all wanted to add to this. Nope, nothing nah. to add. Okay. Jermaine. All right. All right. Well, people, Jermaine Cole. this was uh, the Lunchbox. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this episode, too. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to call this one. Uh, maybe y'all will give me some ideas. But, uh, uh was- subbed or dubbed. That's Sub- what you call it. Subbed or dubbed? <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll go with that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you had uh, Magic Lunchbox, Cadre Bandit, Zemus, and the Amazing Christian Man, and me, the Loaf King, your host. And I will definitely be trying to push this out before the end of the month because that was a plan. Release one at least each month. So, yeah. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for no, no more notifications for when we upload. Uh, and also, if you're listening to this podcast on Spotify, be sure to give us a uh, five star rating so we can uh, continue to output more of these videos and get uh, broadcast to the uh, algorithm of Spotify podcasts and so on and so forth the mighty algorithm gods yes we need their blessing as well as y'all's but that's it this was the love king and if you didn't know you should always stay luncheon catch y'all later peace